This is it, the national championship of college football. Miami, Florida, a city of light for the golden anniversary game of the Orange Bowl, and the weather in South Florida is just right for this most important college football game. Number one, Nebraska, with a 12-0 record under coach Tom Osborne, needing one more victory for the national title, goes against a much smaller but a very physical, tough University of Miami team under Howard Schnellenberger that has won 10 straight games. And now with the upset today of Texas, Miami is in the hunt for the national championship. Schnellenberger and his Miami Hurricanes, geared and ready. They've not played in seven weeks. They've been off since their last game, November 12th, but they're on the home field. And in five years under Schnellenberger at the Orange Bowl, the Miami Hurricanes have won 24 games and lost two. They're the underdog, according to the oddsmakers, but they don't think so. An optimistic and prepared team, ready to take on one of the great teams in college football history, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. We'll be back with the golden anniversary game of the Orange Bowl for the national championship right after this. Test product Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. In a high performance fighter, we go from the griddle to more than 20 degrees below in just seconds. Well, here's an all weather fighter for your car. The new Delco Freedom Dura Power Battery. Hot or cold. It's got the starting power you can depend on. With a Freedom battery, you never need to add a drop of water. Get a Delco Freedom battery starting at $39.95 for a 40 series. Call 800 AC Delco. Across America, 7-Eleven gives shopping freedom to doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs, and little braves. Freedom to people who would rather cast a line than wait in one. 7-Eleven's business is based on freedom. So now we're a major sponsor of the 1984 U.S. Olympic team, giving those that run, jump, dive, and ride the freedom to become the best. 7-Eleven, the dream begins with freedom. Cricky with John Brody back at the Orange Bowl where we're ready to kick it off. Nebraska getting here with a perfect 12-0 mark. The Huskers started fast, blew out Penn State at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, and on they roll, averaging 52 points a game. They scored more points this season than any team in NCAA history. Miami knocked out at Florida early in the season, and then the Miami Hurricanes started to roll. Ten consecutive victories. One big and one when they had to come from behind, but they won. It looked to me like Nebraska, when they posted those scores, looked like the end of a basketball season. They score like a basketball team, the Huskers averaging 52 points a game. Miami has won the toss, but the Hurricanes want to establish their defense against Nebraska's great offense, and Miami has elected to kick off. Jeff Davis, he's not big, but he can kick it deep, ready to hit the ball now for the Hurricanes, and there are two great players, Irving Fryer is back deep, ready to take the kickoff, and back with him is Mike Rozier, six yards deep in the end zone, and he is counseled not to bring it out. And so... The Huskers go on offense, first and 10 at their 20. And there's the whip cracker, the man who makes the Huskers go quarterback, Turner Gill. The fullback, big and very quick, Mark Shaleen, the Heisman Trophy winner, Mike Rozier, averaging almost eight yards a carry. Irving Fryer's another great threat at the wingback position. Ricky Simmons, they don't go to him often, but he can catch the ball and he blocks. And Engebritsen, the tight end, is a blocker primarily. So we're ready to go. Nebraska. First and 10 from the Huskers, 20. They're going to put it up. Turner Gill throws, and he's got his wing back. Irving Pryor didn't get much. He was hit at about the 24-yard line as Coach Osborne now sends in the play. And Siska linebacker knocked him down. Mark Denning, one of the Nebraska tackles, 300 pounds. Henry Griminger, the other offensive guard next to him. Mike Kranowitz is the center and a good one. Dean Skynkuller, probably the best. Lombardi and Atlin winner. Scott Rarden, he's over 300 pounds at right tackle. They got Biggins on the bookends, John. Don, you can slide all the stats you want about that offensive line, but I'll tell you another one. They average nine letters per last name right across, <laughs> across the line. That means they've got a lot of long names and a lot of big fellas. 270-pound average. They move people around. Well, those jerseys are broad enough to carry a lot of letters. And 
right now. It's going to be second down and five for Nebraska. Opening series of downs. The option, Turner Gill, a pitch back to Rozier, and he's open. Rozier is an open field. And finally, Reggie Sutton knocks him down as Mike Rozier almost breaks at the distance. Good for a 27-yard gain and a first down for the Huskers. Down to talk about what kind of a feat that is, and we may see a bit more of that today. The Hurricanes have allowed only one running back all year long to gain over 20 yards. That was a 28-yarder. This is the second longest run against this defense all year long by the Heisman Trophy winner. I guess it figures. And right now, Nebraska breaks the front of the Miami Hurricanes and goes back to Rozier. And again, the power run. And look at Rozier rip it open all the way down to the 30. A free football, though. They're going to rule he's down. The officiating crew from the Southeast Conference, an 18-yard gain on that carry by Mike Rozier. Danny Brown knocked him down as the huge Nebraska front just overpowering Miami these last two plays. Well, the coaches were a little concerned. They're not going to blitz, I don't think, as much as they normally would because they want a lot of pursuit. They don't want their linebackers out of position, but Rozier has run right through their position. First and 10, Nebraska. A free ball at the 30-yard line, but a uh, Cornhusker looks like Scott Rare and our Dean Steintooler came up with a ball, so they keep it. Danny Brown's a defensive end. They're small, more like outside linebackers. Kevin Fagan, a good pass rusher at 265 pounds. Key player for Miami is the middle guard, Tony Fitzpatrick. And Fred Robinson, not heavy, but very, very fast. Julio Cortez, outside on the left side. Jay Brophy gained all of our convention as a linebacker, and Ken Siska is the leading tackler for Miami. First back through is Chalene, and Brophy is waiting for him. Short gain, it'll be third and long. And a penalty marker's down. Reggie Sutton, one corner. They're very hard-hitting, quick corners. Eddie Williams plays free safety. Kenny Calhoun, he'll blitz a lot, and Rod Bellinger's played a great year as the strong corner comes out on the same side as the tight end. That was, that's a play we've seen an awful lot of this year, Don. It's one of those both teams hit, have a little personal personal grudge against one another. Cornerback and wide receiver get after it. They do throw a penalty to tell them to cool down, but no harm, no foul. Offsetting penalties. And so it'll be third down and eight again, and they'll go from the 28-yard line. Nebraska looking for a national championship. They've not had one since 1971, and Tom Osborne's had great teams but never has gone the distance. Let's see if that step stays up. Third and eight Huskers. No score in the first quarter. Turner Gill all day long fires, and he has a man that's broken up. He was going to... One of his wideouts, Scott Kimball, but Rod Dellinger was there to break it up. So now, an interesting dilemma for Osborne and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Fourth down and eight coming up. They don't, they've only tried four field goals all year. And well, the putter doesn't play in a lot of games. That's the area where you can see the, the packed orange bowl. This is the area where they take four downs to get their first. This is an exception. They feel they, can, they have a kicker can kick at 44 yards. Scott Livingston's the man who will try it. The 45-yard attempt. Werner Gill, the quarterback, will hold. It is down at one. Miami has the football. So the Miami Hurricanes have this place an absolute pandemonium. They've captured this town. And the Orange Bowl, early as it is, is in jubilation over a blocked field goal. The special teams knew they had to come up with some kind of a big play to get something happening early in the ball game. They did that. Remember, this team has kicked only four field goals all season. That's the least in modern football history. They made a big play against a weak group.
Mutual of Omaha people throughout the nation and around the world wish you a happy and healthy new year. Now there's a marathon with many competitors, but no competition. The Xerox 1045 Marathon Copier. It's so advanced in design, it can be adapted to run eight different ways. So intelligent, it can think for itself. And so rugged, it can run hour after hour. The Xerox 1045 Marathon Copier. Built to shatter the record for endurance. From Xerox. Rogier with some Heisman Trophy numbers early as the game is. Two rushes for 45 yards, but Nebraska's first drive was stopped. And then a field goal attempt was blocked by Miami of Florida. And so the Hurricanes take over the ball for the first time in the game. It is nothing, nothing first quarter. Bernie Kosar, a six foot five inch freshman quarterback, directing the Miami offense. But he plays like a veteran. And he comes out of firing. Wide open is Stanley Shakespeare. He's down to the 34 yard line. <laughs> When you take a look, when you're talking about Bernie Kosar, you're talking about a fellow that's quite rare indeed. Now he's got his man down the field. He's in a perfect position. Got to throw it over the top of two linebackers. Throws it to Stanley Shakespeare. Picks up a first down. The first play of the evening is a big one. Real big one. Uh, Miami Hurricanes come out of fire, and now they have the ball inside the 35-yard line of Nebraska. First and 10. it inside the 25-yard line, and he has a first down for Miami. The 1984 Orange Bowl is brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to see the new 1984 Nissan 300ZX at your Datsun dealer now. By Goodyear Tires and Goodyear Service for more good years of your car. By Anheuser-Busch St. Louis Brewers of Michelob, some things speak for themselves. And by Mutual of Omaha, the people you can count on. The Miami Hurricanes, the underdog by two touchdowns, driving on their first possession. Now have it first and 10, 23-yard line of Nebraska. Gosar with a quick drop. Runs the ball, Shakespeare's open! He's down to the two-yard line. <laughs> Gosar firing strikes. 22 yards and a first and goal. Don, he fired a strike to it. This is an alternate receiver. He's trying to go to the right side, the short side. He's got three receivers open on that side. Finally, he finds Stanley Shakespeare in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Neil Harris. Throws it right in between the two defenders, down to the one-and-a-half-yard line. I've heard how fine this man throws the ball. He's shown it early. He has really shown it early, and now they're down at the two-yard line. First and goal, Miami, looking for the first points of the game. Bentley runs and he didn't get there. The big front line of Nebraska, led by middle guard Mike Cranmer, number 64, threw him back. And Osborne knew that Miami came out throwing and they came out throwing strikes. Kosar with two big hits to Stanley Shakespeare. It's second and goal. And it's good logic. You don't go up there and try and establish that you can't do something against a team like Nebraska. They know where they're where their ace of spades is, it's in number 20, let him get after it. He's had six weeks to prepare for this team, and he started fast. Second down and goal, Miami. No score, first quarter. Albert Bentley. A big play by Nebraska, Ken Graber. Don, this is Mark Pressman and Howard Schnellenberger. Mark sends the plays in. He, this is his first year as a full-time assistant. He uh, has his law degree. He was a graduate at the University of Minnesota. He works with the quarterbacks. And his statement about number 20 is that I've never seen a man with as much awareness as Bernie has. He's going to need it all right here, third and three. Watch for the tight end to the right, Glenn Dennison. Gosar takes a look. He throws to Dennison. Touchdown, Miami. Celebrate early in this game. But you don't see Howard doing any celebrating. He knows it's 
a long three-hour struggle. He's been in a lot of big games before. Don't let people think, uh, fool you and get you the feeling that this, this is his first big game. He coached with Bear Bryant. He coached with Don Shula in a lot of championship games. Uh, he's been there before. This is the first time he's had the controls, however. And right now, the place kicker comes out. Jeff Davis. Ready to try the point after Glenn Dennison who caught the touchdown pass. A new dad. Wife gave birth to a little boy last week. And right now, we're going to have a pause. Time out on the field. Nine minutes and 18 seconds to play first quarter, and here's the touchdown throw again. All right, you see Dennison, he's a 225-pound, six-foot-four tight end that the people think can play uh, professional football. Now, Kosar has helped him a lot throughout the year, but he's supposed to have very nifty feet. Real strong hands. When you get down in a situation like this, Kosar had a very small area in which to put the ball, but he did so. Glenn Dennison, he graded up, trained up, John, from 212 pounds at the last game, November 12th, to 230 came in tonight. Teammates told him he was eating for two instead of his <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't lose much speed, and that's why the coaches felt it was all right. And here's the extra point by Jeff Davis. It's good. And so... The Miami Hurricanes get the ball for the first time and take it down the field on the right arm of freshman Bernie Kosar. Finally on the payoff end, it's Kosar to his tight end, Glenn Dennison. You know how it feels. The pressure. The misery. Of sinus. When you've got sinus congestion, you want powerful relief. You want the power of 12-hour, the sinus strength formula from the makers of Neosinephrine. It starts instantly to clear sinus congestion, so you feel like yourself again. For sinus congestion, nothing is stronger or lasts longer than 12-hour, the sinus strength formula from the makers of Neosinephrine. Every Ferrari 308 leaving Italy for America leaves on Goodyear radial tires and only Goodyear radial tires. Why? Because Mr. Ferrari wants it that way. The final performances of the nation's finest collegiate football stars. 26 first-string All-Americans in college football's premier All-Star game. Under the beautiful skies of Hawaii, the 1984 Hula Bowl Classic. Next Saturday on NBC Sports. All season long, Bernie Kosar has proved he could play in the big league with his freshman year. Now with him, and he's just thrown three for three for 47 yards, culminating in the touchdown pitch to his tight end, Dennison. <laughs> and when I asked Mark Tressman earlier, uh, what were the determining factors in his picking the University of Miami, he said, some people say, hey, what were you looking for? A fine university? What do you like? Uh, uh, Coach Schellen Schnellenbarger? He said, I was looking for a top-line offense, and this was where I found it. It's a pro-passing game. Bernie Kosar, thinking man's quarterback, he's a Dean's less good. Kicks it off a second time, and again he pumps it into the end zone, but here comes Rozier. What a great player, and Rozier comes from a yard deep out to the 31-yard line. And the Huskers take over for a second time, but down on the scoreboard, 7-0 to Miami with 9.09 to play in the first quarter. Turner Gill, the senior quarterback from Fort Wood, Texas. He's a great comeback story. Two years ago at the Orange Bowl, he was on the sidelines with a brace on his right foot. The doctors told him there was a strong possibility he'd not walk properly again because of nerve damage. The operation, though, was a success, and they say the rest is history. Turner Gill's come back to be one of the great quarterbacks in the history of the Big Eight. And I think Tom Osborne said it best as they attend to an injured uh, Husker. He said, you know, for what we do, I think Turner Gill may be the best quarterback in this country and his stats indicate that I know they've got a good group but he's the one that really coordinates it all he's thrown 13 touchdowns only four interceptions a quarterback with a with a football team that scores 84 touchdowns only throws four interceptions that's all right it surely is and Turner Gill will try to get the Huskers a rolling when we come back to the golden anniversary of the Orange Bowl today there's a new power on the road Today, all eyes are on the sports car news of the decade. 
The first Nissan 300 CX. Come alive, come and drive. Danger motion. Come alive, the V6-powered 300ZX, where art and technology intersect. Digital dash with graphic tachometer. A gauge measures acceleration in G-forces. Eight-way power suit. Adjust your suspension three ways. Now, stand on it. Come alive. The new 300ZX, three liters of V6 motion, fuel-injected turbo thrusted 200 horses strong, to snap you from zero to awesome. Come alive, come and die. From At your Datsun dealer. McEnroe from Wimbledon, Connors from the U.S. Open, Noah, the French Open, and two-time defending champion Yvonne Lendl. Twelve of the world's top tennis players battle in one of the most prestigious events in tennis, the Volvo Masters on NBC Sports. The Orange Bowl, Lumessant on this golden anniversary night of the Orange Bowl game, the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise from Papano Beach, Florida, high above the Orange Bowl in Miami. Both the pilot of the blimp, Don Plaskonic, and his sector coordinator, Mickey Whitman, attended the University of Miami and played for the Hurricanes in the 60s. Right now, the Hurricanes on defense, the Huskers on offense, first and ten, pitched back Brogier. Winston Moss, number 92, and Joe Willie Namath is on the sidelines and after Moss made the stop. And people might say, uh, why is Joe Willie sitting over there on the Hurricane sideline? Well, in truth, the man that got him to Alabama was Howard Schnellenberger, and he invited him to come down and sit on the bench with the fellas, and uh, Joe didn't take long to make a decision. Joe ain't sitting. Nobody is. <laughs> Second down and 10, Nebraska. Pitch back. Rozier. They get him. There they lose him. And now, Rob Dillinger, not big at 5'9", 185, but he's a sticker, comes up to make a big hit. It's third and long. Okay. You take a look. We mentioned over 90%. The Huskers throw on third and long. Now they've got their favorite play, a little option play from number 12 to Rozier. When it, when it doesn't go anywhere, they're sitting in a throwing situation. That's what Miami's been trying to get. Third down and 12. Turner Gill throws a strike to Rozier, but they get him short of the first down. As the white shirts come gang tackling again, led by Rod Bellinger, number four. Rod's backup, Doug McFadden, was the young man helped off the field a short time ago. The Dellinger makes consecutive big plays, and Nebraska has to punt the ball. They've punted the football this season less than any team in 38 years. Not since the Nevada-Reno team of 1948 has any team punted as few times as has Nebraska, 36 times in 12 games. 48, that was Marion Motley up there, wasn't it? <laughs> A high punt downfield. Livingston hitting the ball, and it's going to roll out. 33-yard punt by Scott Livingston. He wanted more. And up comes Kosar and the Hurricane offense for a second time. They went the distance the first time they had the ball, and Miami leads the game 7 to nothing. Nobody looks at office automation quite like Wang. Other computer companies only see the pieces of the puzzle. Data processing, word processing personal computing but Wang looks at how all the pieces fit together and gives you one solution that fits everyone's needs a total solution no other computer company can match bringing everything in your office closer together is what puts Wang way ahead look I'll race you back <laughs> you gotta be kidding for Michelob White catch you later couple of guys really go at it like this for a beer? Well, it is Michelob Light, the rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. Too bad you missed that light back then. Yeah, but I made this one. Oh, those Cornhusker linemen are huge. You must have played the game. Without a helmet. Don't miss the premiere of Night Court, Wednesday. 
A look at the Miami offense. Bernie Kosada, freshman quarterback. Albert Bentley, they say that Rozier is the Rolls Royce of runners, but Miami has its Bentley. <laughs> Keith Griffin, Archie's little brother with that big run. Shakespeare with the two big receptions in that first touchdown drive. Eddie Brown is the deep threat, though. He's the guy to watch, number 40. And Dennison, who caught the touchdown ball. I think he must have been the guy they've been watching. <laughs> Bernie Kosar sets Miami down at the 31-yard line. To the run to Albert Bentley. And he's hit and hard at about the 32-yard line. Ken Graber, the middle guard, again making the stop for Nebraska. Coach Osborne in his 11th year as the head man. They say you can't follow the great ones. He did. Bob Devaney had... 11 straight winning seasons and back-to-back -back national championships. When he retired, in came Osborne with great teams year after year. He's not yet gone the distance. This could be his year. Right now, Miami with the ball leads 7-0. Kosar's hit all three of his throws so far for 47 yards and a touchdown. Coverage is good by inside linebacker Mark Dom, number 51. A little better than good, Donnie. He had a good six, seven counts to throw that ball. Remember, Kosar's offensive line is excellent. They played five games without making a mental error, letting anybody get in Bernie's face. Now that gives him enough time. He's got plenty of confidence. He'll throw a lot of patterns where he has Dennis go down the field, cut back. Excellent coverage by Dom. Michigan, an upset leader right now over Auburn University, the third-ranked team in the country, once beaten Auburn at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. The offensive front of Miami is not big. Bertolucci is a freshman at left tackle. Juan Comandiero, Cuban-born, is the left guard. The center from Canada, Ian Sinclair, and he's good. The right guard has been a terrific player all season. Long. Alvin Ward from Chicago, and the right tackle is Dave Heffernan. Third down and nine for Kosar and the Miami Hurricanes. That's past Eddie Brown. And it's a first down Miami. 12 yards and a first down. Tell you what, Bernie Kosar is impressive. But that offensive line is more so. They gave him another six counts to throw the ball. Eddie Brown was not the intended receiver again. It was a man-to-man -man defense. Take a look. These five guys are setting up. They're getting a little help from, their, from, a, from a fullback. But nobody's even close to Kozar. When he comes over to Eddie Brown, he makes a fine catch. Burke falls down, and he gets a first. A first it is. Out to the 45-yard line. So Miami hits the big third down throw. Kosar throwing strikes right throughout the first quarter. Nebraska's showing blitz. They do it a lot. They hold back though. Kosar takes a look. Swing down. Albert Bentley had a seam across the 50 and down inside the Nebraska 45-yard line. Again, Mark Dom was on the defensive play for the Huskers, but going to be very close to a first down. What a well-thrown ball. Good pattern. We look at the defense for uh, Nebraska. They've got to tighten up a little. They're giving up some yards right now. Big, strong people. Mike Keeler's had a big year for the Huskers, and Bill Weber, a small defensive end, but a good one. There's the key player, Mike Knox. He's broken five helmets already this year, and Mark Dawn, we've seen, <laughs> make a lot of plays. Knox, the number 44, actually on his sixth helmet. Equipment manager will attest to his ability. Second down and one. Long one. The gut. Alonzo Highsmith, the freshman from Miami, goes for 18 yards and yet another Miami Hurricane first down. He was one of the Florida players of the year last season at Columbus High School in Miami, but he was a defensive player. And I tell you, the unknown quantity has an awful lot of quality because these fellas are not in awe of, of what many people considered the best college football team that's ever been assembled. They had six people that made all big eight. They've got four All-Americans on their offense. Right now, Miami's running through their defense. Miami getting big play after big play. 5-16 to play first quarter. Miami leading 7-0. Post-out against 
the flip, throws it, and he's high for Eddie Brown. It'll be second down and ten. One problem Nebraska's had in this great season has been giving up a lot of pass coverage, although there's good players back there. Dave Burke is one of the best, one of the corners. Brett Clark saved the Oklahoma State game with an interception in the end zone. McCashlin's the blitzer, the monster back. And Neil Harris saved the Oklahoma game with two plays in the end zone in the closing seconds. Well, these guys are sitting back there way ahead in most ball games. Now everybody offensively is going to throw the ball at them. That's why they get a lot of yardage piled up, but not many points. It's usually all a team has to do but throw the ball because they're so far down early to Nebraska. But not tonight. Miami's leading 7-0. Kotar. Oh. Dennison looking for a penalty call, but there is none. The coverage is real good. Strasburger was out of number 90. tickets though they needed it 17,000 wanted to come you mentioned the Strasburg was on him he was also on him for a very long time now he's very lucky that he got away without a without a personal roughness penalty we see Dennis in the tight end we saw him catch a touchdown he's trying to beat the the two linebackers they've, they've got all the five short zones covered Kosar can't find him and now Kosar has third and ten against the blitz they pick it up nicely he throws but he's not for Dennison and again, the Miami fans want a penalty call. Kosar is excellent against the blitz, even though he's a freshman. They work on a blitz every day in practice. Here it is. Knox is coming, 44. And Ward picks him up and runs him off the play. Alvin Ward with the big flat clock. When you see Knox coming, it means they have to find some way, as we mentioned earlier, to get to Kosar. You give a quarterback of his ability that much time to throw, and there's nothing he has to do but pick people up. And now it is a 45-yard field goal attempt by Jeff Davis. He's hit only one of 10 outside the fort, even though he's a long kicker. This one's on the way, and this one is right on time. So Miami doing it all right. Coach Schnellenberger trots the sidelines again, as he always does after a score. 4.51 to play in the first quarter, and Miami has opened up a 10-0 lead. A long way to go, but the biggest upset of the year could be brewing in the Orange Bowl. This is Mr. Goodwrench. Did you know that your GM car's engine uses more air than gasoline? For every sip of gas, it takes 15 gulps of air. That's why a clean air filter helps keep you from wasting power or damaging your engine. So let Mr. Goodwrench check your air, fuel, and oil filters. Chances are you'll save gas and money, too. It's another of Mr. Goodwrench's good ways. To keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. I'm working out here with some of our Olympic high jump hopefuls. Now, these people can really jump. They love to jump. See, and you can put more bounce into their jumps when you purchase U.S. Olympic coins. The coins provide valuable support for our Olympians and become priceless memories of the Games. Watch this. Hey, look! A record! I did it! Check it out! Turn precious metal into Olympic medals. Support the home team. NBC Sports World is back with a strong right jab. Knockout artist Tony Sitson conquered Collins in two. Now he returns with his sights set on power puncher Don Lee. The ring heats up at a special time on NBC Sports World. The first Orange Bowl 50 years ago was the vision of Miami Recreation Director Ernie Seiler. He had to purchase temporary bleachers for the 5,000 fans who came to see Bucknell defeat the University of Miami 26 to nothing. Now, 50 years later, here we are on the golden anniversary night with the underdog Miami Hurricanes leading top-ranked and unbeaten Nebraska 10 to nothing with 4.51 to play in the first quarter. Don Pricky with John Brody on a big night in Miami, Florida. The Hurricanes ready to kick it off for a third time in the first quarter. Davis hits a line drive. Here comes Irving Pryor. And he is struck down hard at about the 29-yard line. A 19-yard return by Irving Pryor, and out comes Turner Gill in the Nebraska offense. Interesting, John. Rozier had a 27-yard run his first carry, and there's the numbers. 18, and then they shut him down his last two tries. We will hear from him. 
<laughs> we'll hear from them, but uh, they don't seem too concerned. First and 10, Nebraska. Scalene, the fullback, running hard. Shalene takes it straight ahead from the 20 out to about the 26-yard line. Eight of six. Tony Fitzpatrick, number 62, the nose tackle on, on train of wits. Now look at this. It's necessary for him to make penetration in the middle of the line for the linebackers to be able to fill the hole and the whole defense to operate. That time he got blown off. Rogier breaks open, and Mike Rogier is a hit for Nebraska first down. Rogier with that 41 pitch goes ahead for 12 yards. They say he's Got a great throttle down move. He'll wait for his blocks as fast as he is. Once those big linemen commit, Rogier makes his decision and goes. That time a 12-yard gain. Nebraska gets a first down out to its 47-yard line. 403 to play first quarter. And the clock runs. Miami 10, Nebraska nothing. Hits back, Rogier. started Jack Fernandez a reserve linebacker who is playing quite a bit of late makes a fine play now Turner Gill stops on second 11 he throws a strike and the ball is caught downfield Marty Engerbritson the tight end takes it inside the 40 yard line a gain of 15 yards and Nebraska has a first down they don't throw to Marty often as you see he says when they do I appreciate it <laughs> well I'll tell you one day they did throw it to him three times when they played Penn State on uh, national television in the opening game. So in the rest 11, he only caught four balls. He's primarily a blocker and a fine one, but can't catch it. He's from Hastings, Nebraska, hometown of his coach, Dan Osborne. Now the Huskers starting to move and trailing 10 nothing. The give is to the first back through, Shaleen, the fullback. Big at 225 and very fast at 4-5 speed for the 40. He's ahead for three. Don, we talked about Tony Fitzpatrick, how important it is for him to get penetration. This time he throws Trinowitz away. When he does so, he gets some contact on the ball carry before he gets to the line. And look at number 54, Jay Brophy, sitting right there at the line of scrimmage to pick up the, pick up the runner. Now second down and eight, Nebraska. Swing pass, Rozier. And a tremendous play by freshman Reggie Sutton. Rod Bellinger, number four, comes up, makes the hit. And that's the third big hit by Bellinger at the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up third down now. They're going to spot the ball actually at about the 41-yard line. Well, I've been told that uh, Bellinger was an excellent hitter, but I didn't know he reacted as fast as he has. He's, he's handled Rozier on two plays of that, of that type, keeping him from making any yards at all. That's the way to play. Tough down now for the Huskers, third and 11. Turner Gill on the rollout. He's got the strong arm, and he lets it rip. It's intercepted. Jack Fernandez. Kevin Fagan put the rush on number 95, and Jack Fernandez, a 211-pound linebacker, comes down with an interception, and Miami has the ball again. Don't have to weigh much down to get in the way of balls like he just did. Excellent reaction. Again, it's a third down and nine. How many times have the, have the Hurricanes put the Huskers in this position? When they do, they have pretty well rest assured they're going to throw. They've got their linebackers in a deep zone coverage. Fernandez comes down with the intercept. And as we pointed out earlier, John, Turner Gill throws very few, less than 3% interceptions. Albert Pittler runs the ball, and Albert Pittler takes it to midfield. Ripping off a gain of some 16 yards. The crowd is a Miami crowd predominantly, and they've got something to cheer tonight, at least this early. Well, the important thing is that they knew 
that Miami had to get off to a fast start. And they did that with defensive outstanding plays. They stopped them. They made them throw the ball on third down and longer than six yards to go. That is not what Nebraska likes to do. And when they did get it, they knew what to do with it. And now yet another first down for Miami, just short of midfield. Bernie Kosar with a deep drop. showing early in this game the Miami Hurricanes who waited for this chance a rebuilding program the last five years and they've played inspirational football since the opening kickoff they scored on their two earlier possessions they wanted to kick off and they did to show they could stop Nebraska Huskers drove and had a field goal blocked in Miami and Kosar took over driving down and going in for a touchdown and a throw Kosar to tight end Dennison last possession a 45 yard field goal and now Miami has a second and short and Kosar's looking, he's got a man open. Chris Hemp. Nobody makes contact. Another look now from ground level as Bernie Kosar looking things over, and there's Dennison, a great sure hand receiver from Joe Namath's hometown. Dennison's from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, and he's in for his second touchdown of the game. It is 17 0 Miami. The new dad, Glenn Dennison. quarter for Miami. It's a rocket. Rozier, five yards deep. And the Huskers will get it on. Touchback at their 20. The you know, Huskers are stunned, John. Well, 
They've been stunned because I think it's been good defense by the Canes. They've, they've stopped them and put them in that third down and eight situation. Now, sure, Rozier's made 27 yards or 18 yards on occasion, but if he doesn't make the six and seven yards consistently, they can shut him down, put him in the third, third down situations, and make them punt. Well, let's see. It's first and 10, Nebraska. Hit back, Rozier. Small, quick lineman again shed the blocks of those huge front liners for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Jay Brufy shooting the gap and making the stop. He's loving it. They got a little help that time, too, from, <laughs> from old number 62. Uh, Fitzpatrick has been amazing. He's been <laughs> out of action for eight weeks. They did not know what to expect tonight. He said it won't be anything special, but it'll be the best I can do. And that's been pretty special. It has been real good so far. The Miami defense has been the key to them getting the horn, horn Huskers stopped and getting the ball and now an end around to Irving Fryer. He doesn't go anywhere and he averages 14 yards a run through the season. Julio Cortez, one of those small ends of 205 pounds, stayed home and knocked him down. You must remember that when it's Nebraska, they can start to score like a basketball team against Colorado. They were in a tight game. As one Colorado player said, it was like a bomb hit in the third quarter. Nebraska scored 48 points in the third quarter. That's right, and Miami knows it. They know they're going to get all they can while it's going their way. They've got three quarters to play. They will not try and hold on. Don't worry about that. They know it's throw as much as you can at the wall and hope most of it sticks. Nissan trucks are... This new 4x4 is proof of Nissan know-how. Head him towards the canyon. With the most powerful standard engine in its class and independent front suspension tame the worst terrain. It's one tough hump. 4x4 Nissan style is major motion. Come alive, come and drive. Major motion from Nissan. At your Datsun dealer. Back then, I used to listen to my dad. Hi, son. Because I learned to be the best, you have to listen to the best. Is that right, Dad? Go ahead, son. How's that, Byron? That's not as good as I used to do it. Now I listen to Byron Nelson. And for my investments, I still listen to the best. E.F. Hutton. Who else? When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. Dale Grinstad is a soldier with a dream. The 84 Olympics. His sport, the modern pentathlon. Five grueling events. The army is full of people who are striving to be all they can be. For specialist Dale Grinstad, that means striving to be the best in the world. with John Brody. It has been a most unbelievable first quarter of play. The underdog Miami Hurricanes rolling up a 17-0 lead. They call this the most important game, John, in the history of the Miami University football team, and it could be the biggest upset in many years in college football. I don't think there's any doubt that the University of Miami is not only excited, but college football is on a par with pro right now. A big play. Ricky Simmons, a fleet wide receiver from Greenville, Texas, catches the ball and gets ahead for a Husker first down. When you look at the numbers, though, that Nebraska threw into the football computer this year, they about blew it apart. Over 600 points scored, 52 points a game. How many touchdowns did you say, John? 84. That's not too bad. I can hardly even use numbers like that, but right now, they're not making much. <laughs> and I'm crediting uh, Miami. Rogier going wide and another big play. Again, it is Julio Cortez, a junior from Miami, Florida. He's not big. Miami defensive coaches were talking about they'd have to blitz a lot against what they thought would be running plays to try to get these great Nebraska backs before they got started. You know, they said that, but uh, Tom Olivadato said to me simply, we're going to try our four, four down linemen. We're going to try to play standard. And if that works, we're not going to do another thing all night. Well, it's working. And they haven't had to use the blitz. They've been in control of the line of scrimmage. And that's a rare thing indeed. Early in the second quarter, 
Underdog Miami leading top ranked and unbeaten Nebraska 17 to nothing. Swing pass. Irving Fryer, he gets popped again. It's Bellinger. He's got the Nebraska playbook as Rod Bellinger. <laughs> well, that's, it's a tough thing to do, you know. Uh, we just got word that one of their outstanding linebackers, Ken Sis, got a knee injury. That's why we saw Jack Fernandez in there in the last series of plays uh, defensively, and he, he's done for the day. You know what those knees are like. I would like to mention that Nebraska has three of the top, of considered the top four players in next year's draft. Fryer, Rozier, and Steinfeller, okay? And these fellas are handling them. And they're much smaller. They say it was a 40-pound weight advantage, but it's probably more than that. The Huskers are even bigger than listed. Now, Turner Gill with a deep drop. Stands in, throws out, strike downfield, but Kimball can't hold on. Scott Kimball, a very quick wide receiver, goes high up in the air. Irving Fryer also downfield, goes off the hands of Kimball. Doug McFadden, a young freshman cornerback who was hurt earlier. Ice down ankle, so he'll probably not return, but pretty happy guy as they all are right now. 14.34 to play in the first half, and Nebraska has to punt the ball. Eddie Brown is the deep man, and he's tough. Livingston's first was only 33 yards. He gets off a tremendous punt, though. And fast, Eddie Brown goes from the 14, and there he goes. He's tough to catch. Eddie Brown with one man to beat, and he cannot do it. Mark Shaleen, the blocking back on the punt, a 225-pound fullback, caught him. But Eddie Brown just ripped off his biggest return of this season. And Miami's ready to go again. Well, how sweet it is. You talk about special teams doing their, their part of the job. These fellas up front have created holes. They've made fine plays, rushing the punter. They've, they've been doing their job on, on kickoff returns. And Eddie Brown just brings a long punt return. 48 yards long, and it's down to the 43-yard of the 38-yard line of Nebraska. First and 10. Kosar, he'll check off a lot of the line of scrimmage. Knox blitzes. Swing pass out there, and Rob Stuckey had a play on the ball. So it'll be second down and 10 for Miami with 14.08 to play in the first half. Mike Knox, number 44, the man we talked about is an outstanding inside linebacker. He's been instructed to get after the quarterback. We saw him try to do it with four down linemen. That didn't work. They're now sending five and six. Kosar sees the play. is no good. He throws the ball over the intended receiver, and they go back to the huddle, second and 10. Most young quarterbacks can't do that. This guy looks like he can do about anything asked of him. He has all season. Bernie Kosar dropping again. Second and ten. This time it's intercepted. The monster back, Mike McCaslin, intercepts the ball for Nebraska. Very important interception. The reason being, the Kings were on a roll. They know if they can get to 24, that's an awful long way to come back. Sure, there's a long time, but an interception at a critical time is very hap helpful. Mike McCashlin makes it, and Nebraska takes over, first and 10. This is my hideout. I build golf clubs here, and it's amazing how they've changed over the years. Same with Pennzoil. When you think how much cars have changed, you know, Pennzoil can't just keep up. It's got to stay ahead. And it has. Pennzoil started with quality. And you know, they keep right on delivering it. And somewhere around here, I've got an old tractor to prove it. Pennzoil Quality Protection. Ask for it. When you buy a professional computer from Wang, you get more than just a powerful personal computer. You get an easy-to-use workstation that opens the door to office automation. A workstation that communicates with voice and images and links to other computers so you can share information with everyone in your company. Put the Wang Professional Computer to the test. When you consider all the things it can do, it's an open-and-shut case. 
Last two national champions, North Carolina visits North Carolina State. Great All-American ball player Michael Jordan takes on the PT boat Spud Webb. Intercepted Bernie Kosar. There's Mike McCaslin on the sideline, but he knows that work to be done for these Huskers, and they're a team that is able to do that. But right now, the Miami Hurricanes a surprise 17-0 leader. First and 10 Huskers. <laughs> Nebraska averages some um, 7.2 yards every time they've run the ball this season. But tonight, it hasn't been that way. And first down has been the, the critical down. They have to do something on first down to keep the Canes from getting into an eight-man line at the line of scrimmage and stopping them. They've, they haven't been effective. Only a two-yard gain on that play. Second and eight. Rozier, look at this man. Caught the backfield and off he goes. Reggie Sutton is straight on and he's down but up. I can understand why he went down. He got a good right cross to the jaw. It looks like Rozier may run it in. If it's if it's anybody but Sutton chasing him, who's a real 4-6, 4-5 speedster, he's going to run away with nobody in pursuit. Sutton follows him all the way. Good. Well, they, they traded shots. Remember, in the last four games, Rozier has run for over 900 yards. Right now. Turner Gill sprints out, pitches out to Mike Rozier. He's across midfield on a first down carry. It looks like he has nine before Rod Bellinger again knocked him down. So Rozier with that straight arm. Barry Switzer, the Oklahoma coach, said of Rozier, he plays mad every down. <laughs> well, if he does, he sure is mad now. Uh... Not what the Huskers expected. But still... 12.55 to play in the first half. A halftime score at the Sugar Bowl. Michigan in the process of a possible upset of third-ranked Auburn, leading 7-0. No! Turner Gale lets a home run ball fly. Scott Kimball is bumped off the play. So it'll be third down and just over a yard. Well, they... They don't worry about that third and short. Uh, they're going to take two downs to have a go at it. You can bet on that. If they don't make any yards right now, this would be the time Tom Osborne knows it's critical that they put something on the board, at least sustain a drive, and they will not be punting. There's a big down. Now it's third and a long one. Shalene hits, fights, gets straight ahead, and it's a first down. Brogan coming into the game, gets ahead for the first down carry the up back. Number 66, McMurray. Now he's coming in at the nose tackle position. He's he's holding his own also. When you hold that center right there on the line of scrimmage, you've done your job and your linebackers can come and pursue. Jeff Smith is in as the eye back now, the deep back. Rogier's out. This is Jeff Smith. Play faking it. Gill takes it himself. Turner Gill gets down to the Miami 39-yard line on a first down carry. He was good for a gain of about seven yards. Free safety Eddie Williams knocked him down. Turner Gill has a lot of options. The Yankees want to sign him to a baseball contract. He's a top shortstop. I think he'll, I think he'll go ahead and play professional football if somebody's smart enough to use him as a quarterback. You remember Wally Moon at, at Washington University about six years ago? Well, now he's coming back as Canada's best. At about a million per. You got it. Pitch back, running high with the ball is Rogier, and he's ahead for a Nebraska first down to the 35 yard line. The Cornhusker fans rolled on in, many of them early. It was a little rough out in Nebraska as it has been throughout the Midwest. Rogier's run the ball now 11 times for 80 yards. Two big gainers in his first two carries of the night. And quiet lately. Tim 
Brungard again carries the ball to pull back the up back, taking it down to the 31-yard line. It's going to be second down about six. Don, you hate to overdo one position, but number 62, Tony Fitzpatrick, stands the center up. That allows Jay Brophy, number 54, to find the hole. He hits the, the running back right at the point of attack. But even with good running, he picks up four. You pointed out, John, though, Ken Sisk, Miami's leading tackler, went out with the injury. Right now, it's second down and five. Pitch back. Rozier using his blocks on that great distinctive cutback move. He's down to the 25-yard line. Looks like he might have a Husker first down. Kenny Calhoun, the rover back from Miami, hit him, along with Danny Brown, the right end. Coach Osborne in good times and bad never changes his demeanor a lot like Coach Landry. No, but it's working inside. <laughs> I asked him about, hey, you know, has anybody ever had a better offense than you fellas have in, in, in collegiate football? And he says, you know, I don't know. He said points maybe, of course, all the statistics. He says, but you know, by game time, I've figured out 48 ways it's impossible for us to win. <laughs> well, he's got to do some figuring out to get back in this, but the... Huskers are starting to move now at power football. And right now with 10.32 to play in the first half, Miami wants to check things out. They've got a shaken up player, Eddie Williams, their free safety is holding a wrist. So with 10.32 to go in the first half of this golden anniversary of the Orange Bowl, the shocking early number stands, Miami 17, Nebraska nothing. America's meat and potatoes, McDonald's quarter pounder and fries. Your work, work, working up an appetite. Your meat and potatoes guy. Looking forward to when you can start working on a quarter pounder, Coca Cola and fries. That your favorite guy. That all American taste from your favorite place. America's meat and potatoes, McDonald's quarter pounder and fries. Dig in. McDonald's and you. throughout the nation and around the world wish you a happy and healthy new year. When Clemson arrived in Miami for the 1982 Orange Bowl to face Nebraska, Clemson was ranked number one, but picked as an underdog. Sparked by quarterback Homer Jordan's 13-yard touchdown pass to Perry Tuttle in the third quarter, Clemson won the game and the national championship. And Howard Schnellenberger and his Miami Hurricanes, an underdog in this 1984 Orange Bowl game. Right now, trying to stave off the Huskers, Miami leading 17 to nothing. Second quarter. Irving Fryer. Got some. Down to about the 20. Gain of maybe four yards on the play. Reggie Sutton, the freshman corner, knocked him down. Don, what you, what you have when you don't have a lot of blitzes, this is Jack Fernandez, fellow that came in for Ken Sisk. Brophy was fooled a little bit, but Fernandez is so fast on the, on the ball that he gets out in pursuit. Now remember, when the running back cuts back, and that's Irving Fryer, a certain number one draft choice, they've got five hurricanes around him. Fryer something, he's out in the right flank. He's run the 40-yard sprint under 4-3 at 200 pounds. Rozier doesn't get much, though. He tries to go behind a great right side. Uh, Lombardi and Outland Trophy winner Dean Steinkuhler and Scott Reardon, about 300 pounds of football player, but he only gets a yard. And you can bet right now they have that old familiar option play. They are third down and five. I doubt that you'll see them go for a field goal at this time. I think they'll take two downs and run it. We've seen them throw the ball in this position three times earlier tonight. They were not successful. You'll see some sort of runner. Big down. Third to long five. Heading to the end zone and very close to it was Dean Steinkohler. He's in for a touchdown. I was totally fooled. The best technicians in the world were. And Dean Steinkohler on a trick play goes into the end zone for a Nebraska touchdown. Now we're going to see how it happens because I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what, it's one of those guards around. Every good team has one. 
but you never figure to throw it. Watch Turner Gill come out. Dean Steinkuhler, number 71. He hands it to Old Dean. The ball, he didn't hold it. He left it right on the ground. The only way you can give it to a lineman is you got to fumble it. He cannot take it and hand it to him. So what he did is he got it from the center and left it on the ground. Everybody pulled. Everybody read their keys perfectly, and Steinkuhler slipped right into the end zone. That's a playground play that you never hardly see, but when you do, it's usually effective. I didn't expect a 275-pound offensive guard. You talk about flexibility. Watch it. Now the ball goes right on the ground. Right on the ground. Stein Cooler picks it up. He just left it there. You can't tell me that that's not a planned play, but he has to fumble it. He can't it pick it up and play. leave it there. They've even got a name for it, John. The Nebraska people say it's the Fumble Ruski, and it worked. Nebraska's <laughs> on the board. It's here. The first Nissan 300ZX. A technological marvel. Computerized. Digitalized. Civilized. The new 300ZX, powered by a new turbocharged V6. This sports car is... Awesome. Come alive. Come inside. Make the most from Nissan. At your Datsun dealer. Hundreds of miles above the Earth, an American satellite focuses a special scanning device on the Rocky Mountains. Geologists at Conoco, a DuPont company, interpret and use these satellite images and other new space age techniques to pinpoint likely places to explore for the oil we all need. At DuPont, we believe innovative technology can help solve America's energy problems. DuPont, better things for better living. Thursday. <laughs> Family ties moves to a new night as Alex becomes an adult. I got 18 years under this belt. Join the party Thursday. All right, if there's any doubt in anybody's mind about whether it's intentional or not, Turner Gill wasn't going to turn around and run away from a fumble that wasn't <laughs> right. intentional, okay? Stein Cooler picked it up on the dead run and ran it in. Last time it was done was 1980. Who did it? The Huskers did it against Oklahoma. Chuck Poole, our man from Nebraska, has come into the booth to tell us it is the fumble rooski we've seen, old Broads. <laughs> you said every team has one, right? <laughs> but they don't have one of those. No, not, and here's a guy, almost 280, that runs the 40 and under 4-7. A Haas from Burr, Nebraska. 120 people in Burn. This is a 120-man fan club that got Burr, the ladies. Dean Steinkuller. 17-7. And now, Nebraska kicks it off, and here comes Keith Griffin and the Huskers. Fired up by the Fumble Rooski, come down and cover the kickoff at the 15-yard line. Only a nine-yard return. All right, this is a very critical drive for the Canes because Kosar last time had one intercepted. They know they, they mentioned coming into this ball game, we're going to fire it around the infield. Last time it stuck in the red jerseys. I doubt that you're going to see them try to run and control it, but it might be a good idea if they got the crowd settled down and themselves a little. Throw the safe stuff. Bernie Kosar setting his team down. First and 10 at the 16-yard line of Miami. High back is Keith Griffin. Markers down all over. As big Mike Keeler came blusting through and got a hold of Kosar. And you know what happened? It's a too much timer, I believe. Maybe it's not, but I think it's too much time. And if it is, what happened is Nebraska shifted their defense late. Kosar has been effective in changing the play at the line of scrimmage to the proper call. That time they shifted late, fooled him, and he let the time run out. They have a six, seven month season every year. Yeah, they go to bowl games every year, year after year, decades in a row. They've gone to bowl <laughs> games. So this is the big one in 84, the national championship on the line in Miami. Leading 17 to 7 now is a first and 15. Albert Bentley breaks loose, but a penalty marker comes in at the line of scrimmage. Mark Dahm knocked him down for Nebraska, number 51. 841 to play in the first half. Looks like they're running going back again. Ten-yard run, call back. 
Omoruski might have done some long range damage. Miami's taking the momentum away. What it does, it starts with an interception generally or something. They had so many good things going for them. That was a great interception, by the way. It wasn't just a, another one. Uh, it can turn the it can turn the tide. At least old Mo do change. Oh, he does change, and the holding call sets the ball back just outside the Miami five-yard line. Miami misfiring now. Last three plays, penalty, penalty, and the one before that, you remember, was the Kosar interception. They're coming up late. Blitz. Kosar throws. It's a live ball, and the nearest man to it was McCashlin, do you remember? Intercepted earlier. He Coach. threw it away, but they fooled him again, Don. That's that's the critical thing, and that's what the concern of the offensive coaches was. That Nebraska has real good personnel, but they're also very cagey. They camouflage what they're going to do, and once you beat them for a while at one thing, they're not going to allow it to happen for us for the rest of the game. They've changed a lot of their philosophy right now. They're waiting until Kosar gets set, then they're changing into what they're going to do, and it's bothered them. Out of this game, the call will be against the Miami Hurricane. Turner Gill waiting for his chance again. And he'll get one. He'll get several more. But the last drive was the first time they really did much once they did get the ball. Kosar's brought this, this group out from the 14-yard uh, line. 10 for 17, 178 yards, two deep TDs. Not bad against the number one team in, in college football. Bernie Kosar from Boardman, Ohio. Getting some advice from Coach Nellenberger, and we'll come back to the Orange Bowl right after this. As a relief pitcher, everybody thought I had it easy. Steve Pat here, he'd pitch his heart out for eight innings or so, and then, then I could come, come in, toss three or four pitches, and walk away with a win. But I had to, had to just... train just like the rest of us. Yeah, well, I still like to keep in shape, and I drink drinks light, light beer. beer from Miller. See, light's less, less filling, and light really, really tastes great. Will you just let me finish? Why? You never let me finish. <laughs> like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Let me finish that for you, Sparky. Oh. Hey, Artie. Yeah. 1965, the first Orange Bowl played at night. Alabama quarterback Joe Namath was hurt and was not expected to play. He did, but even his daring fourth quarter sneak couldn't give the tide the victory over Texas. Nevertheless, Namath was named most valuable player. 
And there's Joe Willie on the Miami bench. And talking to Joe about Bernie Kosar, he mentioned simply, he said, this fella can throw. You notice he knows where his bread's buttered. He's in there with the defensive players. He's telling Tony Fitzpatrick how to play defense. See? <laughs> he's learned a lot since he's been out of football. And Joe <laughs> Willie talks football to Hurricanes listen. And right now it is a first and 15 play for Miami. Hurricanes a surprise leader, 17 to seven in the second quarter. Kosar looking long, home run ball. Eddie Brown trying to run under it. Oh, Bernie's got the long distance delivery. Well, I'll tell you, the important thing there is that he came back and he said, hey, they talked early. We're going to use the whole field. He's got a very strong arm, and the whole field means down the field as well as in the zones. And uh, he has spread everyone out, which gives him an opportunity to hit Dennison in the middle on the third down situations. When you spread that defense out, they've got 53 yards of width to work with. He's got a real strong arm, and you can be effective. Second and 15, could be pumping it again. Come on, Keith, let's go! Press again shows blitz, bringing the monster back up tight into a gap. Bernie's waiting for him to come early. Hmm. He's waiting quite a while. Fellas have to get on the same page here with 6.58 to play in the first half. I think you can look for, for them to now get up, call the play on the first sound, okay? They'll have a pre pre-planned play but don't wait don't let them shift they're getting the best of us when we do that not too bad for a team that's down by 10 he's had a hundred yards or more in his last 11 games as Mike Rozier the Heisman Trophy winner right now the Nebraska offense waiting for a crack at it again trailing 17 to 7 to Miami I think it was almost a two touchdown underdog Kosar, ready to let her rip, second down and 20. Boy, they pick up the blitz well. He throws, it's low for Albert Bentley, and the Nebraska defense comes up with a big play. Mark Dom's been all over the field, 51. Well, Mark Dom has a man-to-man -man assignment on Bentley and once in a while on Griffin, whoever's to the strong side working in combination with Dennison, and he's been on him for as long as you can expect a linebacker to cover the back, four and five seconds. Dom has quite a remarkable story. Earlier this season, he had arthroscopic back surgery, and he also had surgery on his knee all this season. Here he is playing a big game for the Huskers. Third down and 20 for Kosar and the Miami Hurricanes. Fast Eddie Brown goes up and doesn't come down with a great defensive play by Brett Clark. Boy, you know, that's also a nice play by Eddie Brown, Don, because he went in that middle blind. He knew that well, that ball was going to be a collision. Uh, Brett Clark, who's playing free safety back there, let's take a look at it on the wide. Now, they're trying to get back to Kosar by rushing five people. They were ineffective with three, and they didn't get there with five. Kosar throws it down the field. Clark's playing the ball all the way. That is a collision. Number 40, Eddie Brown, and number 10, Brett Clark. Great second look, as right now, Miami has to punt the ball, and Rick Tootin kicks it downfield and kicks it far, and here comes Irving Fryer. And Irving Fryer gets it out to the 36-yard line. 41-yard punt and an 8-yard return. They asked Irving Fryer the difference between Lincoln, Nebraska, and Miami this time of year. Irving says, at least in Miami, you can start your car. <laughs> Just another day along the way to another place. Where are you headed today, Private uh, Zaleski? Home. Home. That's one of our most popular destinations. You're the pride of United's friendly side. Thank you, sir. So before you go, my friend, we want you to. Starving. We've got a great mess hall here. Flying high across the land. Don't worry, son. Yours will grow back. We're giving you everything we can. And we've got more to give along the way. Mr. Zaleski? Yes, sir. You're home.
Other Heisman winners have been on display in the Orange Bowl over the years. Johnny Rogers led Nebraska to a national championship. Right now, Johnny Rogers out in San Diego, California. He was an Irving Fryer player, John Lujak. Heisman Trophy winner, never played in the Orange Bowl, but had some great years at Notre Dame, and now automobile dealer in Davenport, Iowa. And Mike Rozier, the 1983 Heisman Trophy winner. Turner Gill, always cool under the fire, and he throws to Rozier. Mike Rozier showing his stuff. Downfield for 13 yards, and the Huskers are starting to cook. Okay, when they get wrong defensively, the linebackers can't get in the proper pursuit. You find Rozier in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Turner Gill. You've got to stop, make him pitch the ball quick. Now he gets on the cornerback fast, turns it inside. They finally get him, but not before he gets about 10. And he's over 100 now, John. He has 103 yards for the night on 14 carries. Straight ahead, running the ball. Across the 50-yard line, Nebraska moves into the Miami end of the field on Mike Rozier's run. Take, take a look at it. This is what a running back in the I formation sees. Now, he's got a lot of his own people crossing in front of him trying to get trying to get trap blocks. He cuts off a trap block that wasn't very effective. Fernandez stopped the play for all intents and purposes. Number 51 held him to three and a half. Special NBC remote camera affixed to the upright in the end zone. Goal post. First time ever, it'll give you some interesting looks as the game wears on, and right now, Mike Rozier takes a look at a Miami defense that stuffs him on a second and sixth play for no gain. Tony Fitzpatrick knocked him down. There's the camera. I don't know what happens to that expensive camera if one of those field goal or extra points hits it. <laughs> it, yeah, it counts if we hit it, I it think. Count, yeah, but the camera might be out. Well, that's all right. We'll the, the, that point, the point's good. That's the camera, showing You can go up and down and... All around. Right. Small interesting angles right over the field of play. Third down and six, Nebraska. Great throw by Turner Gill to Irving Fryer. And Fryer gets the ball down to the 25-yard line. One coach said when Irving Fryer lines up, it's like pointing a loaded gun at a defense. He can do it all. Catch it, run it. That's for 25 yards. Yeah, I tell you, you can especially do it all when they don't have anybody in the zone to cover him. He's standing back there running a delay pattern. Now, there's one man you don't want loose in your secondary. That's number 27. There isn't anybody within five yards or 10 yards when he catches the ball. Gill had enough time to wait for him. They pick up a big first down and keep their drive alive. Real big first down. Third down play, and it's now first down Huskers. They trail 17-7. Turner Gill stands in, throws to the end zone. Todd Crane dives at the ball but can't get there. Backup tight end from Trainer, Iowa, who's caught some touchdown balls very fast for a tight end. Well, Todd Frayne made a commitment a little early. It's a very tough ball to catch. A ball is coming right over your head. But when he turned around, he turned all the way around rather than continue running. If you see him here, he's already committed. He would have run right under the ball on the, on the dead run, but he committed too quick. 429 to play in the first half. 429 to play. Nebraska trailing 17-7. Pitch back. Rozier. He's a dancer until he's one-on-one, -on -one. then Mike Rozier is a knockout puncher. He hits you, you don't hit him. Well, it's wonderful when a back can get his shoulders straightened up. He's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Take a look at the whole defense. They are, they're, the, they're a very pursuing defense, but they are cut off from the point of attack. Excellent block by the tight end. When the tight end gets that kind of a block, it keeps two people from getting into the pursuit. The running back can cut up and get some yards. Good second look as we again go high above the Orange Bowl. Our producer tonight for NBC Sports, George Finkel. Our director, John Gonzalez. Our executive producer, Mike Weissman, is here. And he and his lovely Carol are celebrating a new 1984 son also. Adam, as are the Denisons, the tight end who's caught two touchdown passes for, Nebraska, for the Miami Hurricanes as Turner Gill comes over to coach Tom Osborne. Osborne, as you know, John, you played with him briefly with the 49ers. You played there a long time, and he was with the team briefly. 
a very enterprising coach. He'll do surprising things in big games, and we saw that with that Bumble Ruski. I think he's a very consistent coach. I think he sits and he plans and he makes a real study of coaching football. He's done so when he was 21 years old. I don't think there was any doubt in anybody's mind. He wanted to be a college head football coach. And I think uh, he worked under Bob Devaney, got excellent tutelage, and he's moved in and uh, 29 and 22 in a row isn't bad, is it? And Turner Gill has proven himself a winner. He's quarterback 30 games for Nebraska. They've won 29. They only lost that controversial loss of sorts at Penn State in September of 1982. And Coach Ellenberger, he's known the highs and lows of coaching. Coach the Baltimore Colts, the owner came in the locker room one day and fired him. <laughs> yeah, but to his credit, he was smart enough to walk away. I'll tell you what, he came back, he went back with, with the Dolphins and, and Don Shula, recouped, went back with the offense, got this job, and has really put something to work. He's big in Miami, pitch back. Here comes Rozier, heading down inside the 10-yard line. And listen to those Husker fans that are ripped. They're down in that corner end zone. They put those Huskers on the 50-yard line, but they're down there making some noise. <laughs> They did give him a few seats. They gave him down. They gave him some seats down there where the where the where the Huskers are right now, about the 10-yard line. They've got Rozier coming right at you. I'd hate to be a I'd hate to be a defensive back knowing I had to handle him all by myself. Again, they go to Rozier, and this time a gambling play is close to a touchdown. They run that so much. That's their bread and butter. They don't feel that it is a high. A, a high risk play. Uh, when you have athletes like Turner Gill and Mike Rozier, the coordination is so excellent, they feel, hey, if somebody doesn't, doesn't stop it, we'll just run it in every play. That's a confident QB that pitches out on his way down, and it almost results in a touchdown. Rod Bellinger saved it. Also a good one. A real good one. Now, Coach Osborne's team ready to get right back in it. They're down 17 7. Second and goal. Penalty markers down. the line. 3-0-3 to play in the first half. At the end of the first quarter, it was Miami 17, favored Nebraska nothing. But now the Huskers are rolling, pounding back with that big front line into the game. Well, they, you know, that's not really a very important penalty, but when you're sitting down on all fours in a defensive situation, number 62, Tony Fitzpatrick, they may have ruled that he jumped just a little too quick. He's trying to get off on the ball, trying to create some sort of a big play. I think the chance is worth the risk. Big number from the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, where Michigan leads third-rated Auburn 7-0. That came down to the third quarter. Second and goal from just over a yard out. Okay, good good shot at it. We see that the defense beat the offense on their own snap count. It's the only way you can keep a quarterback from getting in. All season long, Miami's been so tough against the run, they've allowed less than three yards of rush to the opposition. And have allowed only 9.6 points a game to the opposition. from Lincoln now trails 17 to 13. Well, they've, they've done one fine job since that interception of getting back in this ball game. Not trying to do it all at once, Don, but methodically going back to what brought them here. Turner Gill, Mike Rozier, a steady defense. Remember, 84 touchdowns throughout a season to play. They've got a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of weapons, and they're back in it with more than a half to play. Starting to show that array of weapons as now the extra point by Livingston is up and good. And with 2.17 left to play in the first half, the Cornhuskers down 17-0 at the end of the first quarter. Are right back in it trailing 17-14 as Turner Gill takes it in for the second Nebraska touchdown. The first, you'll recall, was a surprise score by guard Dean Steinkuhler. Another day at the office for Coach Osborne. 
Yeah, I guess so. I lucky, and that's on the outside. Nebraska's got enough guys here. They brought in 136 players. Yeah, but he only suited up seven or eight teams, Don. <laughs> so he may have run a little short before the night's over. Ten play drive, 64 yards. Over four minutes to time of possession. Turner Gill on the payoff end from a yard out. Reggie Sutton, fleet freshman, is the deep man in the trio of receivers on the kickoff now for Miami. 2.17 to play in the first half. You know Kosar is going to try to get some more before halftime. At the goal line. Those Miami special teamers come out and throw some explosive blocks. That's how it went the last time with Turner Gill at rest for the moment. After scoring the second touchdown for the Huskers, they trail 17 to 14. Don Crickey with John Brody. At the 50th Orange Bowl game. We see another. We see another hurricane coming off the field, hurting a bit. There's a little over two minutes to go before the half, and it would be a very, very unfortunate time to create a turnover here. Now they've had control of this ball game at 17 nothing early in the game with that with the kind of defense they've had uh, they expect it to be better than they are but don't get greedy. Here's a throw by Kosar downfield and six here makes a great reception at the 46 yard line. Kids got three balls down every one of them a super catch. Yes sir. This is beyond this one. He's able to get both hands on this ball. His feet are off the ground. The ball takes him out of bounds. Steps right into it, Kozar does. Watch this. He hits the first thing. He found a way to get his left foot in before his back hit out. Great play. He put that left foot in, and Stanley Shakespeare gets a 24-yard gain for Miami out to the Hurricanes 46-yard line. See his numbers. He was the key guy in that opening drive when Miami came down the field and scored. They're coming after him. That might be a lateral. Very nearly. Well, maybe so nearly that it was. <laughs> but it wasn't called, and I'll tell you what Kosar did very smartly right there. After he threw the ball, he knew it was close to a lateral, and he kept moving backwards, and the officials generally don't register right away. They check after a couple steps, and he, was, uh, he got away with it. The halftime show at the Orange Bowl is always... A spectacular, and this year, Dan McNamara, the executive director of the Orange Bowl, and his staff have outdone themselves. A look back at some of the halftime shows over the previous 50 years. An extravaganza coming up at halftime. We have 154 to play in the first half. No time. Whoa, McCaslin had it and was running before he got the ball. Mike McCaslin very nearly with his second interception. They were going to Eddie Brown. Well, that ball had to slip off his hand. I know it can get a little hot down there. He put a lot of heat on the ball, and it seemed to slip, just like a fastball would and go over the catcher's head. If you take a close look at him here, you'll see that ball is it's high all the way. The receiver never had a chance for it. I think it, it surprised McCaslin more than anything. It would have been an unhappy surprise for Coach Snellenberger. A second interception. Right now it's third down and ten for Miami. Again, they pick up the blitz. Here's the throw. Eddie Brown. Ball was right there, but he couldn't hold on. It's fourth down. <laughs> Namus said it earlier before the game, he's very impressed with number 20, Bernie Kosar. He said, you know, but I'd like to be six foot five just for one game. He said he could see the whole field, and that was a perfect illustration of it. He had nobody in the middle, nobody on the left, got a little time, threw it out to the right, and the receiver dropped a big one. It was an open receiver and a well-thrown ball, but it's incomplete now. Rick Tootin ready to punt again. Irving Pryor's back, and is he something? But he's got a fair catch, this one, back at the 14-yard line. So the Huskers will have 131 to play in the second quarter after that 39-yard punt and no return. Nebraska after trailing 17-0 now right back in the game. The unbeaten and top-ranked Cornhuskers trailing Miami 17-14. It's been something this first half. Well, you, it's just been it's just been action-packed. It's like we didn't settle down for a quarter because uh, neither did Miami. 
settled down a little bit on the, on the Cornhusker side in the second quarter, and they've still got a minute and a half. Nothing up the middle for Nebraska. Cornhuskers go to the run. It'll be second down and 10. And the clock runs down to 116 to play, and Nebraska not calling timeouts. The Fiesta Bowl on NBC today, Ohio State with a big effort beating Pittsburgh. Georgia upsetting previously unbeaten Texas in the Cotton Bowl at Dallas. A 10-9 victory for Vince Dooley and the Dogs. UCLA came out of flying and blasted Illinois, the fifth-ranked team in the Rose Bowl here on NBC. Now Turner Gill, pump bacon, throws to Shaleen on the screen. Looks like he was going to head the wrong way. Pretty, pretty, pretty good move on the stripe out there. Big guy started to turn back, and Mark Shaleen went to Nebraska to Omaha to start his career. Didn't play football, dropped out for a year, got married, started lifting weights, gained about 50 pounds, and didn't lose any speed. And here he is, the starting fullback for the Huskers. I may not win every race, but I still have an advantage over these guys. I use the Gillette Actra. They don't. It has the advantage of a pivoting head. Actra is better than twin blade razors that don't pivot. See? They don't always stay on my beard, but my Actra pivots to keep both blades on my beard longer. So I get a better shave. Close, comfortable. Get the Gillette Actra and get the Actra advantage. Hey, everyone can use a little advantage. This is Mr. Goodrich, and did you know there are ways you can tell if your GM car's shock absorbers are okay? For one, check your tires. If they show unusual wear, like cupping at one spot, it can mean worn shocks. Make your car hard to handle. So see Mr. Goodrich. I have the right equipment, training, and genuine GM Blue Line replacement shocks available. They have a lifetime limited warranty. It's another of Mr. Goodrich's good ways. You keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. Live action, Turner Gill on first and ten is swept under. Danny Brown, number 41, comes over and runs him down as he tried to roll out. He had Ricky Simmons all the way down to the ten-yard line of Miami, but could never get it away. <laughs> he'd have to be, uh, he'd have to be the longest, strongest gun in the world to get it down to the ten, but he did actually have a receiver down there. That's 70 yards past the line of scrimmage. That's a good long distance. Ricky isn't big, but he can go. Shane Swanson comes out in the left flank now. Turner Gill with five seconds left, firing in the flat. Throws a strike. Scott Kimball coming out of the ball. He's getting quite a bit of disagreement, I would imagine. I don't see a lot of complaints, so he... The halftime show from the Orange Bowl, always a spectacular on the golden anniversary year. It's bigger and better. We'll also be going to... Len Berman in New York, and we'll review the big plays of this first half, and there have been many. There has been throughout college football on bowl day, January 2nd this year. Here's the last play of the first half. Rogier picks it up, and Nebraska, after trailing 17 nothing, is probably quite content to only be down by three at halftime. Very. They were outplayed in the first half. Two good drives in the last in the last two possessions puts them back in the ball game. I think that penalty has been refused. So the Hurricanes and Coach Stellenberger go to the locker room, a surprise leader, maybe not in their minds, but certainly in the Oddsmakers. 17 to 14. Miami in the lead as we come to halftime at the Orange Bowl. Be interesting, John, to see the second half strategy if the Miami team comes out of that same wide open football that worked so well in the first quarter it'll be the same halftime score 17 14 Miami Nissan trucks are can this 59.99 Nissan haul 1400 pounds yep in a double wall steel bed yep with the most powerful standard engine in its class yep anyone else give you all this for a sticker price of 59.99 nope only nissan at your datsun dealer we have been fascinated from the beginning as a machine the human body remains a supreme invention to unlock its potential, we offer Soloflex. Simple and efficient 
like the body itself, which may explain why Soloflex looks less like a machine and more like a work of art. Time at the Orange Bowl. It is uh, University of Miami Hurricane 17, the Nebraska Cornhuskers tap Franken unbeaten 14. Nebraska rallying back with 14 second quarter points after they were down 17 to nothing in that shocking first quarter onslaught by Miami. Right now, the Hurricane marching band is positioning itself on the Orange Bowl field, and then the big halftime show begins. They kick off 1984. Let's go down and look at the University of Miami go into formation. The marching band of the Hurricanes. of memories the 1984 Orange Bowl halftime will continue right after this word. It's a January jubilation on NBC Sports. First Carolina will be jumping.
Robin, when the last two national champions, the Tar Heels of North Carolina, battle the Wolfpack of NC State. All-American Michael Jordan versus Mighty Might Spot Webb. Then we journey to Hawaii for college football's premier all-star game, the Hula Bowl. Plus, Judgment Day in the AFC. It's a gridiron war for a ticket to Tampa. The AFC Championship game. Then, McEnroe from Wimbledon. Connors from the U.S. Open. Noah from the French Open. And two-time defending champion Yvonne Lendl. Twelve of the world's greatest players assemble for the Volvo Masters. Then, join jovial Bob Hope for great golf and great celebrities. The 25th anniversary of the Bob Hope Desert Classic. Plus, NBC Sports World's back with a strong right jab. Tony Simpson sets his sights on power puncher Don Lee. And number one contender Johnny Bump City Bumpus takes on Lorenzo Garcia for the WBA World Junior Welterweight Championship. It's a January jubilation on NBC Sports. Miami is a city of the future. An international crossroads of commerce and cultures in a tropical climate. Because of this unique location, the University of Miami has become a global center of study. Professors and students from around the world together explore the edges of human knowledge and focus on projects of world concern, such as designing energy-efficient cities for developing countries, understanding the Earth's weather patterns by plotting ocean currents, searching tropical rainforests for new biomedical products, and studying the sea turtle's ability to hold its breath for clues to preventing brain damage in heart attack victims. The University of Miami is among the youngest of the nation's top research and teaching universities. Students here work hard in a unique environment to receive a quality education preparing them for life in the 21st century. There are times cities take off. There are times when universities take off. And when those times coincide, there is the stuff of combustible excitement. We here are at the threshold of such times. The University of Miami, a global university in a global city. Since its founding in 1869, the University of Nebraska at Lincoln has emphasized academic achievement. Today, it's one of the nation's major comprehensive universities. Our undergraduate colleges, doctoral, and professional programs attract over 39,000 students annually from around the world. Our faculty includes distinguished scholars, teachers, and researchers. The university is an important center for culture and discovery with a library of over two million volumes. Collections in the Sheldon Art Gallery and the University State Museum are well known for their excellence. Nebraska is also an international leader in research, pioneering advances in such fields as mass spectrometry, atomic physics, agriculture, and food production. Our programs in clinical psychology and student teaching have been ranked among the best in the nation. And our graduates have long achieved distinction in the arts, the humanities, the sciences, and the professions. Each year, thousands come in contact with the extension and service programs conducted by our faculty and staff. Quality in teaching, research, and service. That's our heritage and our mission. We're the University of Nebraska Lincoln, making a good life better for you. The three sitting announcements were furnished by the University of Miami and the University of Nebraska. This is Don Quickie with John Brody at the 50 at Orange Bowl. Now let's go down and watch the big red marching band from Lincoln, Nebraska.
to switch to New York to Len Berman on Bowl Day 1984. Thank you, Don. Tricky, and who would have thought that it would take a trick play to get number one Nebraska going in this Orange Bowl? It was all Miami, 17-0 until then. We will have first half Orange Bowl highlights a bit later on. But first up, the highlights from the other bowl games around the country, starting with the Fiesta Bowl earlier today here on NBC. Tempe, Arizona. Ohio State and Pittsburgh, late fourth quarter. Snuffy Everett's field goal gives Pittsburgh a 23-21 lead. But Ohio State strikes in the final seconds. Final 45 seconds, Mike Tomczak, 39-yard touchdown pass to Thad Jemison. Ohio State beats Pittsburgh 28-23. In the Cotton Bowl, how about them dogs? Georgia trailing Texas 9-3 and punting late fourth quarter. Texas fumbles. Gary Moss recovers for Georgia, and that sets the upset in motion. John Laskinger, the quarterback, 17 yards for the touchdown. So Georgia upset previously unbeaten at number two Texas, 10 to nine. Then came the Rose Bowl here on NBC, all UCLA beating number five Illinois. Rick Neuheisel, 15 yard touchdown pass. He had four touchdowns today, tying a Rose Bowl record. 45-9, UCLA beating Illinois. 13 of the last 15 Rose Bowls have been won by the Pac-10 Conference. You know, it's possible that only one of the top five teams in America will win this Bowl Day 84, either number one Nebraska or number four Miami, the winner to be national champ. We'll have the spectacular halftime show from the Orange Bowl and more highlights after this report from NBC News. This is NBC. This is News Center 3 Update. Good evening, I'm Nancy Chandler. Tonight on News Center 3, we continue our expanded coverage of the Orange Bowl. Terry Yeager will have a live satellite report immediately following the game, and Ann Schaaf will have complete Husker highlights. Now this. Modern gas furnaces cost less to operate, which explains why more Midwesterners heat with gas than with all other energies combined. A little gas does a lot of work. In addition to our coverage of the Huskers tonight, Mike Oling will have a startling report about how the water in your home can easily become poisoned, and a major labor dispute may break wide open tomorrow. We'll have details of that story and more after the game. The best corn insecticide for conservation tillage is Counter. That's because you can put Counter in the seed furrow where it won't get lost in the trash. Counter won't hurt your seed, guaranteed. And banded or in furrow, Counter controls more corn pests than any other product. For trashy fields, go in furrow with Counter. In cleaner fields, keep on banding if you choose. Counter, best for conservation tillage, guaranteed. The Midwest has never seen anything as big as this. It's Mrs. B's 90th birthday party at Nebraska Furniture Mart. To celebrate, Mrs. B has ordered super special prices in every department. Fine furniture, carpeting, appliances, TVs, VCRs, stereos. Save big on any of the quality hot point appliances you've been waiting for. As Mrs. B says, In the 47 years, I think it's the worst prices they ever bought. Happy birthday, Mrs. B. You know something? You're falling behind in the long-distance game. You gotta keep your eye on the ball. Sprint keeps finding new ways to save you money. Like now. They've got no startup fee and no monthly charge as long as you make $5 worth of calls a month. But that's easy. Especially when you can call anywhere in the country. Any hour of the day. You thinking about switching to Sprint? <laughs> Good. You should. Call Sprint. Find out about it. U.S. athletes need more than cheers for the 84 Summer Games. They need you to purchase Olympic coins. The coins give them financial support, and you get valuable keepsakes. And with the right support, an athlete can reach any goal. Turn precious metal into Olympic medals. Support the home team. Happy holidays from all of us at New Center 3. Welcome back to Miami in the 50th anniversary edition of the Orange Bowl. The score at halftime, Miami 17, Nebraska 14. The Orange Bowl game also famous for its halftime extravaganzas. 
This year, no exception in the celebration now of the first 50 years. invites everyone everywhere to join in in its golden anniversary halftime celebration. Here we go with a special show celebrating 50 fabulous years. This is our goal. Here at Orange Bowl to entertain you and to fill you with cheers. You see you all received your invitation for this wonderful, wonderful night. We're gonna
Another fabulous extravaganza here at halftime of the 50th Orange Bowl. We'd like to thank some of the thousands of people who year after year miraculously put it all together. of Orange Ball. The music directors, Milton Delug and Bill Ledoux, the choreographer, June Taylor, Dean Cocroft, and the wizard of it all, Dan McNamara. A night of celebration in Miami, Florida, as at the half, the score stands, Miami of Florida, 17, Nebraska, 14, we'll be ready for the second half kickoff, but right now, back to Lynn Berman in New York. Thank you, Don Crick. An interesting first half, wasn't it? Miami winning the coin toss and kicking off a trick play in the game after Miami built up that shocking 17-0 lead. Let's take a look at the first half highlights from the Orange Bowl tonight. As Miami coach Howard Schnellenberger really had his Hurricanes pumped up. First half action, all Miami early going. First quarter, freshman Bernie Kosar, 22-yard pass to Stanley Shakespeare. Shakespeare must write his own plays in the huddle, right? Name like that. Later in the first quarter, Kosar, two-yard touchdown pass to Glenn Dennison. 7-0 Miami. Still in the first quarter, Jeff Davis, 45-yard field goal. 10-0 Miami over number one, Nebraska. Still in the first quarter, Kosar strikes again. And again, it's Glenn Dennison. This time, a 21-yard touchdown pass. And now, shockingly, 17-0. But the play of the night thus far, they fumble the snap on purpose, and the All-American guard, Dean Steinkuehler, picks it up. That was a set play. A 19-yard touchdown, and that's what sparked Nebraska after they were trailing big. That made it 17-7. Later in the corner, Turner Gill goes over the top for the touchdown. That's where we stand right now at halftime. 17-14 Miami over Nebraska. So, what happens if Miami wins the game? Well, the Miami Herald has polled AP voters. The consensus is... Miami would be named the national champ. We'll have the second half of the national championship game after these commercial messages. Uh, now. The area code is the 20... What would long distance service be without long distance operators? Without operators to help you with collect call, person to person call, operator assisted call. We know this, it wouldn't be AT&T. Operator? Cliff Robertson? Operator service. Call anywhere, anytime, over a century of commitment. That's AT&T. The more you hear, the better we sound. Reach out and touch someone. Why American business trusts Emory. When an oil rig has to wait for a part, money goes down the drain. I trust Emory's same-day service. When I send critical lab tests to 10 hospitals overnight, I count on Emory for results. Sending documents for million-dollar deals across the country doesn't intimidate me. I trust Emory, desk to desk. Over one million customers trust Emory to deliver. Call Emory. We've earned the trust of American business. Aha. There's a thief in this attic. This skimpy amount of insulation can rob you bland on your fuel bill. Fight back with the attic blanket from Owens Corning. It's the thickest, most powerful roll of thermal protection you can have. It can help you save money on your fuel bill. It is an open and shut case. Owens Corning, building products that put your house in the pink. Half time at the Orange Bowl, and right now, the leader is the underdog University of Miami Hurricanes, leading favorite Nebraska 17-14. Don Crickey with John Brody here at the Orange Bowl. John, it's interesting that Nebraska has had a dominance in time of possession, even though they're behind, they've had the ball over 20 minutes. Is the Miami defense going to get tired? Well, I think it does bring up the question. It's 20 minutes to 10 minutes in time of possession, and I think your defense has a much more strenuous time out there on the field than does the offense. It's a lot harder to rush the passer, 
than block the man. It's an awful lot harder to chase a Mike Rogier than it is to be an offensive lineman and move around and do what you can. It's also an awful lot harder to play defense against a man running deep like an Irving Fryer. So when people say, hey, both teams are out there, it shouldn't affect either. Also keep in mind the fact that Nebraska has three deep, very strong personnel. As far as Miami's concerned, they have 20 outstanding players, but boy, they could be tired. Well, Nebraska brought 136 guys, so they're deep enough to go for two games. But right now, it's going to be interesting to see if the Nebraska Cornhuskers can stave off the Miami passing game, which opens so strong. There's been an interesting strategy change. Two Nebraska players are wearing the wrong jersey intentionally. That's really Dave Burke, number two, McCashland, is on his jersey, but he's normally 33, Dave Burke. And uh, Mike McCashland's wearing number 33. <laughs> well, let me tell you why they did it. Now. I'd like to hear it. All right, me. because what the, one of the keys for Miami when they started the ball game was the key number two. Dave McCashland is the type that gets up on the line of scrimmage. He's a fellow that moves around. He blitzes from his safety position. When he does so, it was a key for the type of pattern that Kosar wanted to throw. Well, early, he didn't seem to have any problem. Whatever he was watching worked. You notice it took him a little time, but he made some fine plays out of plays that looked covered. Then later in the second quarter, the jerseys have stayed the same. The funny thing is, I think Kozar might have picked it up because Burke has a mustache and McCashlin doesn't. Now, uh, they haven't gone so far as to change their, their appearance, so I I'm going to imagine that Bernie Kozar picked it up. Before the game, Fryer and Rozier changed their jerseys, but they switched back. Here's the kickoff to Miami. Reggie Sutton. With a penalty marker down, Reggie breaks her loose. It's a foot race, but it'll all come back. As two markers are down inside the Miami 20-yard line, a 32-yard return, but there may have been an illegal block on the part of the Hurricanes. Bernie Kosar with his quarterback coach, Mark Pressman. 178 yards throwing in the first half. And that, and that stat is, is a little bit misleading because those throws for a, were for a lot of yardage, 178 yards in length, and that's a good staff. That's a good half by any standards. We noticed this half that Miami didn't like to kick off. Nebraska had the ball enough, they felt, in the second quarter. Miami's plan was to <laughs> give it to Nebraska at the outset, though, and they did. Stop the Huskers their first drive. Actually, a blocked field goal, and then Miami went right down and scored. Coach Schnellenberger wants an explanation. Coaches always do, and they always lose. On well, I tell you, not all, they don't always lose, because they do get the attention of those officials, and somehow I think people who do kind of raise their voice on occasion when the ball goes against you, get the best of it. Hurricanes start off in the hole to start the third quarter. Kosa gives up to Keith Griffin. He fumbled the ball, and it might be it is Nebraska's ball. A great run by Keith Griffin, but Dave Burke, even though he's wearing McCashlin's jersey, is the man who came up with a free ball. I wonder if the NCAA would look into that. I mean, God, well, there's nothing in the rule book. We looked into it at halftime, Don, and we can't find anything that would preclude someone from doing this. We've been calling Burke McCashlin the whole first half and vice versa. So you people at home, I hope you understand. Anyway, that was that was Burke who made, made the play. And here is Keith Griffin, who is an excellent one, but the Cornhuskers have the ball, and that's Rozier. Boy, he takes a pop from Reggie Sutton. Uh, the Huskers go to the run, capitalizing on an early turnover here in the third quarter. Nebraska with a chance to take the lead if they can take it in. There is Dave Burke <laughs> in the jersey of friend Mike McCashlin. They changed helmet numbers, too. I'm sure they didn't change helmets. Maybe they changed identities. He's going to go the rest of his life being... Mike McCashlin. Second down and ten. Reverse. Nope. Fake to Irving Fryer. A big play. Look at the break up there down at the 11-yard line. We had two guys go to the moon for the ball. Rod nope. Bellinger's only 5'9". Kimball's six feet. But they were both way over the rim. When you take a look at the people who have made the outstanding plays for the Hurricanes, in the first half it was Rodney Bellinger. He made four big plays. He starts off the second half doing the same thing. Being one-on-one -on -one with Irving Fryer's no picnic. But he can handle it. Here you go. Got a piece of his arm and kept him from coming down with it. Third down now. 
Nebraska needing a big play after getting the turnover. Swing pass, it goes out to Shaleen. Open field tackle, but the cut down is made short of a first down, so it brings up fourth down, and Nebraska, well, we'll see if they send out their field goal unit. I think they're going to. You know, a lot of times you'd go for it on fourth, but there's four yards to go, and they have not been effective when Miami has given up to stop the run. And, uh, well, they're going to have a go at a field goal and a tie. It's a whole lot better than being behind 17-0, like Nebraska was in the first quarter. The last one didn't get airborne. That's right. I mean, that's the reason they only tried four coming into this game all season. This one did. Right on range and up and through it goes and all of a sudden Nebraska comes out quickly, capitalizes on a fumble by Miami and a field goal by Livingston ties the game at 17. So the Huskers will kick it off again in a moment when we return to the Orange Bowl. When your car starts acting up, it's really trying to tell you something. What it's saying is, take me to Goodyear. Goodyear Auto Service can add years to the life of your car because Goodyear knows your car from the ground up. My Goodyear technicians can do everything from scheduled maintenance to most emergency repairs. And I've got this, the name you can trust for auto service. Goodyear Tires and Auto Service for more good years in your car. Across America, 7-Eleven gives you the freedom to be an early bird, a night owl, freedom to give a reward for bravery, freedom to take a break, or to answer the call for help. 7-Eleven's business is based on freedom. So now we're a major sponsor of the 1984 U.S. Olympic team, giving great athletes the freedom to pursue their dream of becoming the best. 7-Eleven, the dream begins with freedom. The 1971 Orange Bowl was the first of Bob Devaney's three consecutive wins of the now classic New Year's game and the first of Nebraska's back-to-back -back national championships. The Cornhuskers edged LSU 17-12 with a fourth quarter score. Right now under Coach Osborne, it's Nebraska 17 and Miami 17. And even though the third quarter's only less than two minutes old, Livingston's ready to kick off for a second time. A high spinning kick. Albert Bentley running it back. Albert is a tough hombre, and he comes across the 20 to the 24-yard line. The 1984 Orange Bowl is brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to see the new 1984 Nissan 300ZX at your Datsun dealer now. By AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. By Owens Corning, makers of pink fiberglass attic blanket insulation. And by Xerox, managing information around the office and around the world. A city of light, Miami, Florida, on the golden anniversary night of the Orange Bowl. Right now, the home team, Miami, which really had this place rocking with its first quarter onslaught, is in a tie game, and Miami goes to the run on first down out to the 28-yard line. Reggie Sutton was shaken up a bit earlier. He's a gamer, though. He'll be back. Well, they need him badly, and uh, we mentioned that there is a possibility that defense could get a little tired. They can also, they can't afford an injury to a man as key as Sutton. We see Howard and Mark Tressman, the offensive receiver coach down there, discussing how they're going to get something on the board. Second down and eight. Coach will be firing. He's got it. Got a man open, Eddie Brown. What a great catch out to the 47-yard line. Kosar throwing strikes again now as a 20-yard pitch, and Eddie Brown, who you remember lost one late in the first half right there, this time makes sure. Well, those are such difficult catches because you're, you're making it in between two defenders, and take a look at it. Here comes Kosar. He throws, gets a little nudge, but when you're Eddie Brown, he knows he's going to get hit as soon as he catches the ball. We see Doug Burke hit him before he can get his feet on the ground. That's a tough way to hit. Reggie Sutton with a bruised shoulder. Defensive player for Miami right now. Hurricane offense. First and 10 at their 47. Albert Bentley on a draw. 
Albert Bentley hit once and twice and three times, and he keeps on going ahead for an eight-yard gain. This, this is the this is the kind of play that they need more of. This rests the defense. It keeps their drive alive. And you take a kid like Bentley and also Griffin. These guys are hard running backs. Now, you can see they expect the Canes to throw. They're getting a six-man pass rush. Mike Knox gets shielded off the play. Bentley's not going down until he picks up eight. Second down and two comes up for Miami. And the Hurricanes pick up the blitz. Kosar locks it out there and has his man, Albert Bentley. Bentley's one of the spiritual leaders of this team. They love him. He used a walk out, rode his bike to practice one day and asked for a tryout from Coach Nellenberger. Couldn't catch the ball at all his first two years. Now he's an excellent pass catcher. He's made himself one. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KMTV Channel 3 Omaha. Don Crookie with John Brody. Orange Bowl, 84, Miami. And Nebraska tied 17-17 early in the third quarter. Miami driving. They've not scored since the first quarter. Back to the run. They rip it open. Alonzo Highsmith, the 230-pound freshman from Miami. Rips ahead for yet another hurricane first down. Take a look at Highsmith and what he sees. Once you get that ball and get those linemen spread out a little bit, real good blocking from Bentley. His, his fullback allows him to get through the point of attack. When he does so, he picks up the first. 14-yard gain as Turner Gill waits passively on the bench. This is what they need to do, John. Miami has to keep the ball in their position for some period of time to let their defense rest. Right now, the Hurricanes moving it through the Nebraska defense as they did in the first quarter. First and ten to the run. The running hard. Look at this man bump with the football. Alonzo Highsmith, the defensive player of the year in Florida last year, is a defensive player here at Columbus High School in Miami. Same high school at Don Shula's son quarterback last year, and they almost won the state championship or two years ago. And right now, Don, Sh John, the, the big guy on the sideline says, keep it coming, and he sends a play in, and it looks like Kosar's looking to the end zone. Now, flat pass, he goes to Alonzo Highsmith, who's going to keep going to number 30 as long as it keeps working. He did not throw to his backs much in the first half. He threw down the field three times to Shakespeare, a couple times to Eddie Brown. But his backs are renowned for their ability to catch, catch passes coming out of the backfield. They're man-to-man -man on the linebackers. Kosar hits him right on the break. Nice to have backs that can both run the football and catch it. And he's got three in Highsmith, Griffin, and Bentley. You're in the backfield with NBC's remote goalpost camera looking on as Kosar now has been leading the Miami Hurricanes on a third quarter drive. You see his passing numbers. The all-time record for passes in an Orange Bowl is set by Namath in that 65 game. He threw 37 times. Kosar is probably going to go over 40 tonight. 9.55 to play third quarter. Tie game. First down zone man's open and Shakespeare has the ball tipped away by Dave Burke and the flag is thrown Don that is the in the critical area generally it's offensive pass holding but we'll wait and see hurricanes down close they started first and goal from the nine yard line of Nebraska now this new set of downs after the throw to Highsmith That was strict. That was just simply a motion penalty, and they, they refused it. I'm sure they would have taken a, a ten-yarder. Fast Eddie Brown, number 40, at the top of your screen on the left flank. Shakespeare off to the right. Tight end Dennison. He's always a man they like to go to down close. Here's a throw. Penalty marker in the end zone against Nebraska. Coach Osborne says no, but the official says yes, it'll be first and goal down at the one. Dave Burke calls for the foul. 
Well, at least we think it's Dave Burke. We haven't been able to see a look on his face. It's either he or McCashlin. We mentioned before they had switched jerseys. He tries to make the only play he can. He's got no help from inside uh, by a linebacker. A close call. I couldn't tell from that view of whether or not he, he actually made contact before the ball hit. A very, very close call. Coach Osborne thought his guy was right there, but it's a first and goal again now for Miami. One yard line. Remember in the first quarter, the first touchdown on a similar play was a quick throw to the tight end. Dennison and Bernie Kosar not wanting to miss a golden opportunity. Calls a timeout. So this under control freshman comes over to talk to his coaching trust and we'll be back to the Orange Bowl right after this. First, someone gets an idea. Then someone else may look at it differently. Even add a thought or two. Technology from a company called TRW helps ideas get around. Because getting an idea from one place to another is as important as getting an idea. Tomorrow is taking shape at a company called TRW. In a tied game, 9.40 left to play. Miami, after leading 17-0 in the end of the first quarter, now finds itself locked up with favored Nebraska, 17 all but Miami. Point blank range, first and goal from the one after a pass interference call. Over the top. Alonzo Highsmith. a fine job of recruiting that he's using a few of them today and that one just got the job done we're going to watch that again in a moment you from that mounted remote camera All right now we're looking from the remote camera at the far end of the field and here is jeff davis ready to try the point after which he hits up and gets that carom shot so all right if it counts and it does so it's all working right what do they talk about the two things you can't coach speed and luck and take a look from the back you can see there's no one to meet him when he goes up so he goes over alonzo highsmith into the air and into the end zone and miami has a 24 17 lead The RCA Digital Command Center is a remote control for your new RCA Color Track 2000. But this unique remote does more than control your TV. It also controls a new RCA video cassette recorder and video disc player. One remote control for total control. The RCA Digital Command Center, a giant step forward at the touch of a finger. We'll open your eyes. Shooting on location is a real challenge. But how good a picture is can depend on how good the paper is it's printed on. That's why the photographers I know use Kodak paper. Not just for the pictures we earn our living with, but for personal pictures, like these. Because what a picture says on the back says a lot about how it looks on the front. Kodak paper. The only way to be sure you get it is to ask for it at a retailer displaying this new sign. Last two national 
national champions. North Carolina visits North Carolina State. Great All-American ball player Michael Jordan takes on the PT boat Bud Webb. Alonzo Highsmith, freshman from Miami, just went over the top from a yard out to get the go-ahead touchdown as Miami it has not scored since the first quarter, now has taken a 24-17 lead. It's the goalpost camera with a sweeping view of the sold-out Orange Bowl. It's been a tough ticket. Well, it gives you it gives you a unique view, but when you get down close to the goal line, it gives you a very good view. You can you can see the hole. Now Miami ready to kick it off. Jeff Davis puts a boom into the ball. He's going to deliver it down to the two yards deep. Jeff Smith will bring it out. He knows what to do when he gets the ball. And Jeff Smith, uh, back up to Mike Rozier at I back for Nebraska, takes it out to the 29-yard line. And now Coach Osborne ready to send Turner Gill out with the play. Gill is a very quick-witted quarterback. They let him change up as much as he wants to. And Osborne says, very honestly, when we come down to a play that's a decision time with a timeout, we usually go with what Gill wants. And he has six options run-wise, and he's generally, he looks at the defense every time he comes up to the line of scrimmage, and when they run the ball, a lot of the percentage is audible. And what if they're going to do it? Turner Gill calls his own number, and a big play is made by Miami. Jack Fernandez and Tony Fitzpatrick. Boy, when a, when a nose tackle can slide along the line of scrimmage, get enough penetration to grab the quarterback, that's beyond his job. He's played, he played, he's played really superior football, Don, with an eight-week layoff. It's incredible. That's one thing about bowl games. A lot of people tend to forget it's almost like a new season. He's, Miami hasn't played in eight weeks. It's like the opening game. Fire, quick pitch, and they go to Irving Fryer. He hasn't done a whole lot tonight. But look out. Some pro scouts have him rated the top player in the country, Irving Fryer. Well, those are little bitty throws that often gain him lots of yardage. That time, uh, Kenny Calhoun was standing right in his hair, and it only picked up four yards. That play is designed to go about, about 12. Let's see if they throw. Fryer came in averaging 20 yards a catch, averaging just over eight on four catches tonight. Gill on third down, throws it short of a first down. Nebraska will have to punt. Did they, they really drop it? They did. They had that touchdown, and now the defensive stand by the Hurricanes has again ignited the orange ball. That's, that's, to, the, that's to the credit of, of Howard Snellenberger, because when a coach can take a team who is who is desperately tired at the end of the half after having led 17 to nothing you get the feeling that hey the strength is coming back we even questioned it ourselves since coming out in the second half they have been strong you talked about momentum john it has certainly now swung back to miami here's eddie brown fielding a punt on the run and fine special teams play by the huskers a knockdown at the 27. The final score is now in from the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. For that, let's go to Len Berman in New York. Thank you, Don. Final seconds in the Sugar Bowl. Al Del Greco, 19-yard field goal. He makes it. Auburn squeaks by Michigan 9-7 to without scoring a touchdown. We'll go back to the Orange Bowl. Don and John right after these messages. Ever since man set foot on Earth, he has been a creature on the moon, traveling, exploring, always in motion. We have made a science of motion. We are Nissan, a major name on the road for 50 years. Behind every Nissan car and truck is advanced technology. Nissan is now perfecting vehicles that can run on hydrogen or electricity. Nissan has harnessed computers to control car engines revolutionized dashboards, employing sensors and electronics to cool you, warm you, warn you, entertain you, guide you, protect you, and yes, propel you. At Nissan, we make driving more thrilling, more efficient, more comfortable. At Nissan, we make every drive major motion.
Johnson dealer. Back at the Orange Bowl, the news that just came in from the Sugar Bowl that third-ranked Auburn has defeated Michigan, but barely 9-7. to seven. So I think, Jan, we can safely say if Miami wins, they've got a better-than-good shot of going to the top. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about that. That's a very conservative estimate. And if they do win, they deserve to be on top. But to beat Nebraska, you've got to go to the final gun, and the Huskers really rip it open in the second half. Here's a home run ball. Eddie Brown is out there. He thought he was tripped, and the official now comes in with a late flag and says he was. He had to make a decision as to whether he could catch the ball or not. He was, it was definitely a, some sort of contact made about 20 yards down the field. It was a very late pattern. It was, it was, he was definitely beaten. Had he not, had he not touched him, and you'll see Eddie Brown going down, not quite able to get the ball. You'll see Burke standing around trying to get off the ground. He had taken a shot at, uh, at Eddie and uh, actually hit him. I think it's a good call. Steve Dans, our NBC statistician, shows that Kosar's thrown the ball a lot and he distributed it. Brown's caught three, Dennison's caught three, Shakespeare's caught three, Albert Bentley's caught three. This time they're gonna run it. Albert Bentley gets the call. He's a tackle-breaking runner on first and 10. He gets across the 45-yard line of the Huskers and down to Nebraska's 42. There have been several impressive hurricanes tonight, Don, but I think number 16 stands right out amongst them. He's a big back weighing 225 pounds. He's six foot three. He blocks. He blocks well for Kosar for the pass and is an excellent receiver. Uh, what does he block? He hits that blitzer and makes him wish that he was back in Lincoln. It's another one. Here's a throw to Keith Griffin. And he's inside the 20 and down to the 17-yard line. Bentley just kills guys on the pass block. Yes, he does. But you know what? The, it's really heads-up play by Bernie Kosar. This is the man he's supposed to be king. He was wearing number two. But here's McCashlin coming after Kosar. He sees him quickly. Bentley handles him. But he rolls to the right to make it a very easy block for Bentley. When he does so, he knows it's a blitz. He's got a one-on-one -on -one situation. Finds a way to get the ball to Griffin. He picks up a long gainer and a first down. What was it that uh, Schnellenberger said about... Uh, about Griffin, if he'd been playing at, uh, at Nebraska, maybe he'd be a Heisman Trophy winner. Well, his brother Archie was twice at Ohio State. Yeah. Archie's here for the game. In the invocation before it, here's Keith Griffin again. Somebody lost a hat, but Keith Griffin keeps on going inside the 15-yard line. Wade Priner, number 85 in the game, makes the stop for the Huskers. Tom, Tom, Tom Osborne has reasons to concern himself right now because He's getting beaten at the line of scrimmage. The offensive line for the Hurricanes are taking it to the Cornhuskers, and those two backs are running the ball. They are running it with gusto and a big Nebraska defense. Now it's second down and six for Miami. Play whistle dead. Too much time. Yep. And you know, it's funny, Mark Tressman said, what we do is, he is so bright, he, I only have to give him a very short signal before he picks it up and can relay the play. So we very seldom get caught for that. And too much time has been the result of the defense of, of Nebraska most of the time in that. You know, John, I thought you made an interesting observation. Halftime, we were talking among ourselves. You said that Kosar has fun playing football. And I think that's illustrated by his attitude towards the game, he said. He wants to be a student, first and foremost. He plans to be a lawyer. If he never plays after college, it wouldn't break his heart. He'd like to. But he always played football for fun. If it ever stopped being, he didn't want to play the game anymore. Doesn't look like it's ever going to stop being, either. He's having fun right now, but here's a second and ten play. They go to the draw. Keith Griffin working hard, puts two arms on the ball as those Nebraska Huskers, led by Mike Knox, the big inside linebacker, trying to strip it from him. You remember they did early in the third quarter. That's right. Couldn't score points. Or did score points. Scored the tying field goal. Right. And Miami came back and went with the head with a go-ahead touchdown. It's a critical time. Now, Jeff Davis is the man that got him into this bowl with a late, with a last-second field goal against Florida State. He's ready. He's, to me, I don't think you'll see them throw a high-risk pass right now. They'll give Jeff a chance to kick a field goal if they can't find a back. End zone look at 
Eric Kosar, a strike. Eddie Brown dives down to the seven yard line. It looks like he might have enough for a first down. A third and 10 play, and here's what Miami got there. We talked about earlier, their offensive line and backs didn't make a, didn't make a miscue for five games, Bentley. Look at it now, you think Bentley hasn't, isn't geared into McCaslin? It doesn't matter what jersey number he's wearing, he better change again. <laughs> Eddie Brown makes the catch, but again, Bentley picks up the blitz to give Kosar time to deliver. And now the ball's down. First in goal from the Nebraska seven-yard line. Five minutes left to play in the third quarter. Clock running. Miami and White. Almost a two-touchdown underdog coming in, leading Nebraska 24-17 with the national championship of college football on the line of this game. like a new person. She doesn't mind last-minute revisions, doesn't even make mistakes. I don't know what happened. Now she can remember hundreds of letters word for word. How is a mystery. Now Jane gets her work done faster than anybody. It's just amazing what a Xerox memory writer can do for your image. Now Jane goes home on time. The Memory Writer by Xerox. Hey, hey, what'd I tell you? Bobby Allison's favorite. Gentlemen, start your engine. Welcome to Maritime. It's all yours, and it's all mine. Bring your thirsty self right here. The rich, smooth taste of Miller beer is what you have in mind. Welcome to Miller Time. Welcome to the rich, smooth taste of Miller High Life. Thursday, Bill busts loose with a wacky bunch of Jerry Lewis impersonators. Oh, Jerry Lewis. It'll crack you up. Here's Billy. Thursday. The Orange Bowl is rocking with 4.44 left to play in the third quarter. Miami, after tied up 17 all by Nebraska, rallies now for two quick touchdowns, and the Hurricanes lead 31-17. And you don't like to belabor a point, but they have run the ball on first down. Both those drives, nine out of 12 times in the second half, just the opposite of what they did to start out the ball game. It's given them control of the clock. Miami, Florida, this is where it's at tonight. Here comes Jeff Davis into the ball. The gun sounds a spinner downfield. Irving Fryer with that great speed breaks it up the middle and gets across the 35-yard line, and a penalty marker comes in. We talked about the explosion of the Nebraska offense, which can detonate at any time. Right now, the Huskers had some catch-up to do. There, the explosions happened on the other side. And now a mark-off against Nebraska. Tony Fitzpatrick, 62, making sure the ref doesn't miss a beat. 
two very impressive Miami drives. The first was 75 yards for the go-ahead touchdown. The last 73 yards in six plays. The way they've been executed is the impressive thing. They've changed the personnel, the personnel in the in the key situations. They didn't go to number 16 uh, in the first half much at all. This half they've come to him in critical, critical, critical third down situations. Also 40. Uh, they're doing it. We were talking earlier, John, under Schnellenberger. Miami is rarely a loser on the home field. They're 11-2 and two on national TV under Howard. And even more impressive at the Orange Bowl. At 26 previous games, they've won 24 on the Schnellenberger era. And people talk all over town. You see, you see signs on buildings, and uh, it's been the most enthusiastic Orange Bowl I've attended. Unbelievable. This is your eighth. Kane Warren, they call it. And here comes Mike Rozier turning the corner. Puts his head down. He will take on the tacklers. Rod Bellinger back in. Makes the stop. A local disc jockey wrote a rock beat song called Hurricane Warning. It went right to the top of the charts here in Miami. <laughs> now it's doing the rest of the country. I think most of the country can hear these fellas right now. It is loud in Miami right now. Last five carries, Rozier has gained only nine yards. This is a man who averaged almost eight a carry all year long. Gill throws. Great catch, Scott Kimball had it and lost it. Scott Kimball from Camarillo, California, went up in air. He's an athlete, and a Miami player is shaken up. And there's also a penalty marker down. We might have a foul against the Hurricanes. It'll be a big break for the Cornhuskers. That was a very late flag. It was not thrown while the ball was in the air. You do not see it right now. This has been some football game. And it's got a long way to go. Kimball goes up and they... Four. Apparently rule that Rod Dellinger had a piece of him before the ball came in. Now that's all you coming so? back. I don't know what it is, but uh, we'll wait and see. Rod Kimball's had a member of his family in the last eight Orange Bowls. That's he had a brother that went to uh, Oklahoma. Scott, excuse me. He's got a lot of brothers. They've been playing here. <laughs> like conduct was swearing because I didn't see any fisticuffs I didn't see any action after the play but there was an official there and uh, that can be penalized sometimes in the heat of battle the wrong thing is said and if he hears it well like that it's 15 yards Four fourteen to play in the third quarter Rod Bellinger's helped off Mike Rogier had some thoughts before the game, and let's listen to Mike, the Heisman Trophy winner. This is the real house of the Rozier family. As you notice, we have no breaking down boards on the windows, dogs running around, no shootouts, no gang. It's a nice town, and I really love it there. I'm glad to be from Camden, Jersey. Thank you, Mike. Mike uh, reacting to a story that on another network, apparently, they shot some scenes of Camden in an area other than where the Rozier family lived. You can see where all the Rogiers grew up is a real nice place, and it's a terrific family. Met them all at the Heisman Trophy dinner when Mike got the award. His brother Guy is also on the team. Sutton. We see him on the ground every once in a while, but when the play's on, he's he's live. You know, and I think really it's time if Nebraska's going to get back into this football game that their offensive line takes over because those are the fellas that have been given a lot of credit all year long. They're losing at the line of scrimmage to a very strong Miami defense. And Miami John has throughout the season been stronger in the second half. Rogier, he's got blockers. 
makes a move on, cuts back, and Sutton makes a move on him and knocks him down. Second and 15 play, he got back about 10 or 11, but it looked like for a moment he might go the distance. It also looks like he uh, has a little limp on his left leg. Listen, when a man like Sutton is sitting in the open field with Mike Rosier, you're not supposed to be to bring him down. The fact that he stopped him, stumbled it, made him fall out of bounds is an excellent defensive play. Excuse me. That is Kenny Calhoun that missed him originally. Now watch Reggie Sutton come up. He's sitting here with about seven yards either side. Oh, yeah. So now it is... Turner Gill holding the ball. He breaks into open field. A first down and more as Gill comes inside the Miami 40-yard line and down to the 38. And they'll now check out the very valuable left ankle of Mike Rozier. An 11-yard gain on that carry by the Nebraska quarterback with three minutes left to play in the third quarter. It's been remarkable that a man like Rozier stays as healthy as he does throughout the season running the ball as much as he does. Well, that is true. Those great running backs are very durable. 10, 210 pounds to Grosier. It's first and 10 now for the Huskers. Gill plays vacant. A lose the rush for a moment. Throws on the run and he loses his man incomplete at the 25 yard line. A great play by R Turner Gill. Threw a fastball on the run, hit the ball right down, but Bonnie Engerbritson, the tight end, couldn't hold on. Well, you see, the Miami defense did a fine job on the play, but. Uh, as Howard Schnellenberger said, he said, you know, this fellow, when he doesn't throw, averages six, seven yards a carry when he goes back to throw and decides to run. He said he's only eight when he does throw, so we don't really care what he does. It's going to be a tough night. They're doing it pretty well so far. Second and ten, Nebraska. Husker is down by 14. Pitch back. Jeff Smith, 20. A move to the ten. The Cornhuskers lose the ball inside the five-yard line, and Miami has it. trying to keep his group pepped up. They make a big play trying to get back in the ball game. 14 points down. Let's take a look. Dean Steincooler, number 71. He leads Turner Gill out. Gives him a little time to make the option throw when he does so. It's a beautiful timing play. Fumble, which I don't think anybody expected as Nebraska hasn't fumbled the ball all night. Very good tack play by Eddie Williams down there. The ball's coughed up and an alert Miami defense falls on it. 35-yard run and the fumble. Coming out to field is Fred Robinson, who came up with a football, a senior defensive end from Miami, Florida. Coach Nellenberger doesn't have to go far to find good football players. And he's played very well tonight, Fred Robinson has. He's one of the down linemen. He's recognized for his pass rush. Obviously, the, <laughs> the Cornhuskers don't throw that much, so he hasn't been highlighted, but he's been very effective over there on the point of attack. Now the Nebraska defense will dig in and try to get it back. Stopping a touchdown, but there's a big problem now for Kosar and the Miami Hurricanes. Downfield he goes. Whoa, very nearly intercepted by Nebraska. Dave Burke went up. And Eddie Brown turned defensive back when the ball came in. Very, very good play by Eddie Brown. He's as good when he's trying to break up a pass as he is when he's trying to catch it. He knows he's, he's out positioned by Burke on this occasion. All he can do is grab Burke's arms. As you see, he grabbed his left elbow, and when contact was made, he pulled him down and kept him from being able to intercept. A very big play by Eddie Brown, but again, Miami goes now second and 10 from the Hurricanes one-yard line. They better hurry. Got seven seconds to get it off. Albert Bentley, he did well to get to the line of scrimmage. These Huskers are looking for the ball. Actually, he couldn't lose too much. He's on the one-yard line already. 2.09 left to play, and the clock running in the drama builds already today. Third rank and previously unbeaten Texas. So he's second rank Texas going at the outset today was upset by Georgia. 
Auburn, the third-ranked team, was a two-point winner over Michigan in the Sugar Bowl. And right now, Miami ranked fourth in one poll and fifth in another, has a 14-point lead on top-ranked and unbeaten Nebraska. Late in the third quarter at the Orange Bowl. Bentley puts his head down, but Mark Dom is there to stuff it. That was a third and ten play, and Miami has to punt the ball to the Huskers. You know, I think they're using their head. What he does is on first down, he try, he sees if we can't get a big play to get out of here. That's when I'll get some time to throw. But he's not taking any unnecessary, foolish risks by going back, throwing on third and ten, getting caught for a safety. Uh, that would really hurt him. I, I can't see where Bernie Kosar has done anything but act like a, like a seasoned senior, and he's only in his first year. Right now, his teammate Rick Tootin ready to punt from the end zone. Nebraska sets up coverage. Tootin unloads. Irving Fryer has it. White shirts hold their lanes on punt coverage and make Fryer take it up the gut. And he returned it nine yards after a 41-yard punt. But Nebraska now comes out offensively with good field position. They almost took it in the last time, but then that fumble crossed them the ball. That's right. This is a little better than good here. Get the ball on the 36-yard line. This is a four-down offense. Mike Rozier, the Heisman Trophy winner, not back in the game after he was tackled. That one play and injured his left ankle. Trying to walk it off. Pitch back goes to Jeff Smith. He can go, and Jeff Smith is ahead for a five-yard gain to the 31. I think an interesting statistic here might be to bring up that Miami is the team that on first down has averaged 8.8, .8 and you get to see it on your screen. Nebraska, 3.6. That is not their style, and you must credit the Miami defensive down linemen and linebackers. They've played very well indeed, giving away a lot of size, but when it comes to the quickness factor, Miami's up there among the national leaders. They give up less than 10 points a game. Turner Gill looks, fires, and he has a strike. Scott Kimball turning off the flank and out, goes down to the 21, a nine-yard gain. It's a Nebraska first down. That'll do it for the third quarter, John Brody. The gun sounds at the end of the third quarter. The score is Miami 31 and Nebraska 17. As Miami could be a quarter away from the national championship, we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Hi, I'm Steve Martin. Join me Friday, January 6th for the premiere of The New Show. What's new about it? Well, through a new process called broadcasting, NBC will actually transmit signals that appear in your home on your TV as visual images. <laughs> It's O'Daniel Motor Center for the all-new 84 Hondas. Truckloads of Hondas are arriving daily at O'Daniel. The Prelude, with a standard of excellence unmatched in the industry. The Accord, with quality and value that have made it a success. The all-new Civic Line, totally re-engineered for 1984, featuring the 84 CRX, the nation's most fuel-efficient car, or the Civic Hatchback, or Civic 4-Door, or Civic Wagon, all at O'Daniel Motor Center, 78th and Dodge, Omaha. Go with the winners, the Nebraska Cornhuskers and B.F. Goodrich. The B.F. Goodrich Power Saver Radial HT is America's number one farm tire. And like the Huskers, B.F. Goodrich has the winning choice all season long, from the TA radials to the steel-belted all-season tire. Available at Capital Tire Stores, Omaha and Lincoln, Weaver Tire and Service Council Bluffs, Frost Car Care Center, Omaha, Old Father's OK Tire, Beatrice, Scala's OK Tire, Creech, Schneider's OK Tire, Auburn. At the stroke of midnight on January 1st, the new year was born, and so was the new Northwestern Bell. We're the same company in all the right ways, and we have nearly 20,000 employees all ready to go on serving you. At the same time, we're looking forward to the new opportunities we now have to meet all your telecommunications needs. The new Northwestern Bell. We're making our New Year's evolution to serve you better than ever before. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from News Center 3. Mike Rozier, and this could be the key play as he was hit on his left ankle. You'll see him cut back. Reggie Sutton catches him, and Rozier, the premier runner in the game, has not been back since. Yes, sir. It's a big situation. But let me tell you something. They've scored 
opponents have scored only 10 points against Miami all season long. Now, that is an amazing statistic, and they've got a 14-point lead. So it's an uphill battle indeed whether they have Mike Rozier or not. And without him, it's really steep. Up back, takes it straight ahead, Mark Shaleen. Interesting, John, that in three, ro in three orange bowls, Mike Rozier's never been in the end zone, never scored a touchdown in this game. And in the second half tonight, after rushing for 138 yards in the first half, he had a total of minus two yards and three carries in the second half. Canes were looking for him. I think what you're seeing right now is a little change in philosophy as far as uh, Nebraska's concerned. They're throwing the ball more than they normally do. Second and nine. Turner Gale takes a look, man is open. Scott Kimball loses the ball at the end zone. Incomplete. Rod Dellinger with play after big play for Miami, and frustration builds on the Nebraska sideline. Well, frustration should, because Turner Gill thought for sure he had a touchdown. He pulled the string on the throw just a little bit. When he did so, he had no play. You take a look, Scott Kimball's in perfect position. The ball didn't have quite enough zip on it, and Bellinger was right there. Nebraska down 31 to 17. like 45 or 50 pounds lighter than this. He was a walk-on, and are they glad to see him? Well, they are from Lake Worth, Florida. 18. Right up the beach. Fagan's actually a sophomore, Kevin Fagan. Now fourth down in Livingston, ready to try a 47-yard field goal. He was on time with his last one. Jordan wide left, and the Hurricanes take over. This 1984 Orange Bowl game is brought to you by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. By the people at Soloplex, wishing you a happy and healthy new year. By Emory, we've earned the trust of American business. And by Nissan, who invites you to see the new 1984 Nissan 300ZX at your Dustin dealer now. us your special cargo. Nissan technology can handle it. The Sentra Wagon, over 60 cubic feet of hauling, sprawling space, harnessed to a high mileage Hemi head power plant. The Sentra is a wagon wonder from Nissan. It is major motion. At your Datsun dealer. It's a big step, Tom. I'm still gonna go to college, Dad, but after the Army. I thought you wanted to be an electrical engineer. I'll be learning about electronics, and I can qualify for the Army College Fund. If you qualify, the Army College Fund will help you accumulate as much as $20,100 for tuition. So you're gonna be a soldier? Be all that you can be. And an engineer. You can do it. Be a good one. In the Army. Chair America, the guys from Riptide are about to be a smash on Tuesday. Put it in gear for Riptide tomorrow. Be there. The numbers break down in Miami after a big first quarter, no points in the second, and again the big third quarter. Now at 13:34 in the ball game remaining, Hurricanes take over first and ten after the missed Nebraska field goal. is there to stop it. Rob Stuckey makes the stop in Mike Rozier. The great runner for the Cornhuskers who went out with an ankle injury has not returned. Trying to walk off that ankle injury was unable to. Jeff Smith has been in at the eye back when Nebraska's had the ball. Can't do anything if you can't run. I mean, that's he's done. He's made a very big contribution. What's happening right now is that uh, uh, Miami is unexpectedly winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. 
Even though they're smaller, they are indeed. Bertolucci, Camandiero, Sinclair, Ward, and Heffernan, the interior lineman for Miami. Kosar, play fake. Screen. Griffin catches the ball. And those Huskers are hitting tonight. A scoring recap of the game. You remember that first drive of the Hurricanes that passed to Denison? It was 7-0. 45-yard field goal by Jeff Davis. Miami extended its lead to 10-0. Then another throw to Denison from Bernie Kosar. It was a surprising 17-0 shocker. Then the surprise play by the Huskers. The 11 guard around. And Nebraska was on the board. And again on a one-yard dive by Turner Gill, making it a 17-14 game. The third quarter field goal by Nebraska tied it. Then the Hurricanes opened up. Highsmith, the rookie, went over the top to put them in front 24-17. Albert Bentley went seven yards for a touchdown. That's how it stands now. 31-17 Miami. Alonzo Highsmith had it and lost it. He stops the clock with the incomplete pass at 11.58, and the Huskers will get it back now as the Hurricanes have to punt. Kosar looks like he's been playing this in the big league for 10 years. Well, I'm sure he has been going over it in his mind in the big leagues, and he'll be in them for quite a few more. He feel, he, you can tell some guys fit there. He's one of them. He's got a long time to go at Miami, a freshman, actually a redshirt freshman. He's in his second year in school, but he was redshirted his freshman year. But as an athlete, he's a freshman. A line drive punt by Tootin. The Cornhuskers were able to recover it. That would have been tough to come back from a fumble by Irving Fryer, but a Nebraska teammate comes up with the ball. 47-yard punt, no return. Back after this. Listen. When your car cries for service, it's saying, take me to Goodyear. Goodyear Auto Service can add years to the life of your car because Goodyear knows your car from the ground up. My Goodyear technicians can do everything, from schedule maintenance to most emergency repairs. And I've got this, the name you can trust for auto service. Goodyear Tires and Auto Service, for more good years in your car. New from Campbell, homestyle chicken noodle soup with an authentic homestyle taste because it's made like you'd make it yourself with tender pieces of chicken garnished with carrots, celery, and parsley and lots of little enriched noodles all subtly seasoned in a rich broth. And if beef's more your style, Campbell has a new homestyle beef noodle soup. Homestyle soups, down home, delicious and different. Mike Rogier's left foot just came off. It's been diagnosed as a severely sprained left ankle. And you have to think at this point it's unlikely he'll be back. Where are they now? Leon Hart, one of two linemen ever to win the Heisman. Big Leon out in Birmingham. John Hewitt, another Notre Damer, 1 of 64. And right now, Jeff Smith breaks it open for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Gets out across the 30 to the close to the 35. John has taken his bonus money from the Jets and has <laughs> parlayed it. Out in Tucson. Second down and about a foot now for Nebraska. Irving Fryer comes out in the right flank. He's not been hit deep yet. They're going to try it pretty soon, though. But he's been hit a lot. Oh, yeah. They're looking at deep now. Gill throws. They get the first down as they go to tight end Marty Engebritsen. Putting the try in anyway. Uh, you'd like to be able to go to your Heisman Trophy winner if uh, when, the, when the game gets late and you're two touchdowns back, uh, he could insert some sort of uh, adrenaline, but I don't think it's their problem right now. Both of the backs that have replaced them, Jeff Smith and uh, Paul Miles, they both run very well. It's at the line of scrimmage. Is tough. End around, Chris Hubbard. Nebraska recovers, but Ricky Simmons, who took it on an end around left 
dropped the ball in the big 300 pound tackle mark benning from denton texas fell on it but there's a loss on the play for the huskers and the clock runs down to 11 minutes to play seems to be the way it's gone all night long just when something looks like it it'll break we we flub a hand off if we make a big run somebody causes us to fumble it hasn't gone their way and a lot of that is because the miami hurricanes have played very opportunistic aggressive defense Ricky Simmons goes to the sidelines. Miami was so prepared coming in. Rod Bellinger is taking some licks. Boy, he's passed him out. Right now he's helped off again. Lucius Delegal goes in to replace him, number 47. The freshman, Reggie Sutton, is up against Irving Fryer on the right flank. to Nebraska first down up to the 49 yard line a 15 yard gain on the play they've done very well at using very few seconds on the clock moving the ball some 35 to 40 yards down the field in some minute or, or less than a minute the receivers have been able to get out of bounds after they've caught the ball but remember when Nebraska gets behind they don't have a lot of drop back passes they have that play action stuff that isn't really too effective when it's second and nine third and ten and everybody knows you're going to throw they go to the run they go to the quick hitter to the fullback Shalane. Mark Shalane gets across midfield down to the 47 yard line on a first down carry got about three Jay Brophy made the tackle for Miami well you can't say enough for the defensive play of Jay Brophy uh, Tony Fitzpatrick Fagan you name it all those fellows are standing people up at the line of scrimmage and that's a great football team they're playing. Good fake by Gill. Looks long. Guns it. The pass is complete downfield of the 36-yard line. Scott Kimball coming back at the ball. Very well-thrown ball and a well-run pattern. Good for 12 yards and a first down for the Huskers. Not, I don't think they have enough time to be fiddling around running into the line right now. I know that's their that's their uh, their pattern, and they've, they've always done so, and that's part of the reason I think they get in trouble when they get too far behind. Of course, they haven't done it <laughs> all year long. Uh, yeah, the catch-up offense has not been part of their repertoire. That's right. They don't. I bet they don't practice it much. But they have been in two tight games that have gone down to the final play in the end zone. The Oklahoma State game, they won 14 to 10, did Nebraska. And after that one time, Osborne said, at least they can't accuse us of running up the score in this one. <laughs> and a couple of pass breakups against the Sooners of Oklahoma by cornerback Neil Harris saved that game. 28-21, Nebraska won. Jeff Smith breaks it open, and Jeff Smith rockets down to the 22-yard line. It is a down on a 15-yard gain. So much from my viewpoint. I start talking about how they have to throw it. Okay. Take a look. Dean Stein, Killer, Raritan, the two real big, all big eight, all American, all everything linemen come out and do a fine job. Give their running back a chance to run. Jeff Smith's doing the job when called upon. Miami doesn't shy away from big teams. Notre Dame came in with a front line as big as Nebraska's and Miami shut out the fighting hours here in the Orange Bowl 20 to nothing this year. First and 10, the run takes it down to the 20-yard line. You were talking, John, about the enthusiasm, really the emotion of this whole metropolitan area rides with the Hurricanes tonight. Miami football's been down until the Howard Schnellenberger era. He's brought it back, and tonight it could hit the pinnacle. Yes, and so many people have talked. You know, when you take a look, here's a defense that's, you know, led the nation in so many categories, and yet they were given very little chance against what some people think is the best team that's ever played. So... Gill calls his own number, quarterback draw, three steps back in the quick shoot up the middle. He's down inside the 15-yard line. Coach Osborne sends in the play. He's got to be taking a look at that clock, which now is down to 8.35 and running. They've used it very, very well. Remember, when a team picks up a first down, it automatically stops the clock until the chains are moved. So you can pick up some time that way. There's loads of time. call signals very intense crowd looks like Turner Gill might have fallen on it John and if he did he could have been enough for a first down we'll see where they spot the ball he's got it and it looks to be a first down Dr. Tom Osborne 
Well, I know this, that if they don't give it to him, I'd have it checked because it looks like it's close enough. It doesn't look like it is one, but it's within six or eight inches. Fourth down, Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier is out with an injured ankle. Nebraska without his best weapon, the pitch back to Jeff Smith. He turns the corner. He's got the first down from behind tackle, drives him down to the five-yard line of Miami. And now Nebraska goes first in goal from the Hurricane 5, 7, 34 to play. Tell you what, Dean Steinkuhler, we you sit there and so many times people will say, well, why do we always feature him? He features him the whole scene. They run behind him a lot. He's a great blocker. He pulls very well, and he makes contact at the point of attack. In a critical situation, he picks up a big first down, or he's responsible for it. With a freshman 255-pound Jerome Brown, 98, who made the knockdown, and now a Miami player is attended to. Looks like it could be a heat cramp. We'll be back to the Orange Bowl right after this. January 1st, responsibility for your leased Bell business phone switched from Bell to AT&T Information Systems. Ownership of the phones transferred to AT&T together with most of the system's technicians and many service representatives. The same people you trust are now at AT&T. Call 1-800-247-7000. Remember this number for service or new business phones. AT&T Information Systems. Nissan trucks are... Major motion. The 1984 King Cab. Extra room in a compact truck is a Nissan innovation. Nine cubic feet of lockable space behind the seats. Sometimes it holds my work. And sometimes... It holds my workers. The one and only King Cab, a tough Nissan original. Come alive, come alive. Nissan At your Datsun dealer. The final performances of the nation's finest collegiate football stars. 26 first-string All-Americans in college football's premier All-Star game. Under the beautiful skies of Hawaii, the 1984 Hula Bowl Classic. Next Saturday on NBC Sports. Don Cricky with John Brody back at the Orange Bowl. This is what the two teams are playing for. It's nice, but the national championship, which is also on the line, is priceless. All right now, it's 7.33 to play. Miami has the lead, but Nebraska's challenging. Miami leading 31-17. Turner Gill turns up, turns in, gets down to the one. Turner 7.15 to play the clock running, Nebraska. After scoring early in the third quarter, after fumbling a Miami, recovering a Miami fumble to tie the game, has not scored since. As you see, the Hurricane defense holding Nebraska to 35 points below its season average. Huskers come in scoring like a basketball team. 52 points a game. Over the top, Jeff Smith is in for a touchdown. 6.55 to play, and the Huskers are right back in it. I don't think there's much doubt they'll go for the one-pointer here. Some people say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, what do we do? Do we go for the two-pointer or the one-pointer? I think psychologically it would be a defeat if you go for a two-pointer and don't make it. You see they're starting to move off at the line, at the point of attack. Their offensive line actually has all the action on the other side of the goal line. I think it would be a downer if they went for two and didn't make it right here, whereas if they kick, kick the point, they stay within seven and a chance to make two later. And without Mike Rozier. Saw Johnny Rogers on the sideline. They were asking, where is he? He's right here. <laughs> there is no overtime, as you know, in college football. The extra point by Livingston is up and good, and it's now a 31-24 game. Nebraska will kick off with 6.55 to play. 31-24 Miami with a seven-point lead now as Nebraska puts up its first touchdown of the second half and an over-the-top dive by tailback Jeff Smith. small business today. If you can't keep costs down, who knows? Could be curtains. All state update. Business insurance now custom made. 
my Allstate agent for home and auto insurance just saved me money right here. Those good hands tailor the policy for just the coverage this business needs, nothing more. <laughs> Why settle for some ready-made when you can save with custom fit? <laughs> You're in good hands with Allstate. Great ball game on the golden anniversary of the Orange Bowl. Don Cricky with John Brody. John, an interesting dilemma now facing Nebraska. If they should tie this game, would they uh, get the next touchdown? Would they go for the tie and maybe get the national championship? They could conclude unbeaten. I think they definitely would if they did it soon enough. But I think if it happened late in the ball game, they'd go for the win. And I think we'd have a chance to see whether Tom Osborne thought it was better to win the national championship or to win the Orange Bowl. I know it would be a very unpopular decision if it happened late and they didn't take a shot to win it, but uh, those are coaching decisions. <laughs> I uh, can remember a game several years ago where there was a 10 to 10 tie between a couple of nationally ranked teams and it didn't settle well with the fans at all in Notre Dame, did it? People forget though, Michigan State punted after Notre Dame did. Yeah, he's, that man seemed to survive quite well. spinning kick down to Keith Griffin. He's got a problem. Look at those Huskers come down. Oh, these guys are playing like champions now. 6.49 to play. Miami has the ball. John, of course, a moment ago referring to the 1966 game between the two unbeatens, Notre Dame and Michigan State. Ended in a 10-10 tie, and the Irish won the national championship. And it was for the same reason that they went for the tie. So... You know, if people make such a such a, a large issue of who wins the national championship, and people have done so, uh, which is most important? It's a pretty large issue, bro. That's right. The whole state of Nebraska rallies around the Big Red, and right now they're putting the heat on. Kosar hit from behind, but he gets it to Eddie Brown. <laughs> Eddie Brown's got some moves he hasn't used yet. Hey, I think, you know what I think? I think Bernie Kosar would like to have access to what this camera does. He'd like to see number 87 coming around. <laughs> you know, Bill Weber hitting him in the back just as he lets go of the ball. It'd be a whole lot easier to play that position if he could. That was the NBC remote camera up on the goalpost. Eddie Brown with his fifth reception. He got... Miami out of jail for the moment. It's second down and four right now. Miami leading 31 to 24 with 641 to play. Keith Griffin, Keith Griffin puts his head down and Big Rob Stuckey knocks him down. It's 61 degrees in Miami. A lot warmer on the field underneath those shoulder pads and helmets. Light it up. Signaling the new year. That's, that's a little mock-up of a man that's injured, I guess. All's fair and whatever, not by me. Let's see what Bernie Kosar does here. I think you, there's a good chance you'll see him throw a pass in the third and two right here. A little short one. Nebraska blitzing. Bernie throws. He's got Keith Griffin. He's got a first down. and Brett Clark knocked him down but the money throw from freshman Bernie Kosar <laughs> to senior Keith Griffin gets a first down for Miami and you see the clock 5.51 to play and I'll tell you he had Keith Griffin so far open he threw that thing like a shot put that baby was not going to get anywhere but to old Keith good play at a critical time good call old Keith is all business too isn't he when he gets it to that earlier fumble. He's made some big, big plays all night long for Miami. Got away from the Buckeyes, did Keith Griffin. Left Columbus to come to Miami. First and ten, Hurricanes. Keith Griffin, he's popped by Mike Knox, that tough inside linebacker who broke five helmets already this season. How'd he break them? While they were on his head? Or? <laughs> yes, he did. Yes. He didn't drop them after practice. <laughs> All right, Mike Knox, outstanding linebacker. So he broke him. Gets in good position. 6'3", 235, Mike Knox from Castle Rock, Colorado. Butkus type. See, they don't like to be around him in practice. He didn't know when it's the real thing.
thing or not, he knows, but he likes to go full speed all times. Knox, second down and nine now, Miami. Hurricanes lead by seven, 440 to play. In the flat, it goes to Eddie Brown, and he dives ahead. But there aren't many people that continually come up with the needed play at the needed time. Cosard one and number 40, Eddie Brown. He's the fellow that got them back in the ball game against Florida State, gave him a chance to kick a field goal late, win the ball game. Beautiful play, breaking those two tackles. Boy, it was a tremendous play. 31-24, Miami and White with the lead. Gosar has set an orange ball record for passing yardage, 300 yards for the freshman. Live action, Albert Bentley. He's been quiet for a while, but not now. Oh! That was a touchdown. If he keeps his feet, he made so many good moves to get in the open. It was very difficult to keep his balance, but what a great play. There's another man, number 16. Their offensive personnel has really outplayed Nebraska's tonight. Number 20, 16, 44, 40, you name them. Number six, Stanley Shakespeare, early in the ball game. All of their, what you call, skilled positions have had great nights. Albert Bentley with the big run, as you point out, John, he was gone and he had to hold his footing. He did get up first down. This holds up. There's going to be some party in Miami. Well, you know, it's it's funny. No matter how the much you hear, will be up late. <laughs> no matter how much you hear and how much enthusiasm the city of Miami had, all the smart people said, "Hey, yeah, but they're playing against Nebraska. Now, who did they beat? Uh, they beat some good teams. I'll tell you, East Carolina and Florida State at the end of the year were playing exceptional football. Anybody that saw them play in a bowl game knows. And these guys have come to play." Pick it up, Keith Griffin. Go to the draw play, and Keith Griffin is ahead on a first down carry down to the 26-yard line. You know, by design, when you're blitzing against the draw play, you should stop it for a loss. But if, the, if just a small crack opens and the offensive linemen use good technique, they can break something for the back, and he can pick up good yardage. That's what happened. Kosar read the blitz, gave the linemen a chance to see their blocks, and look at the crack they created. Beautiful play. Bentley, number 16, was in there at the point of attack. Juan Comandiero, the Cuban-born guard, had the big seal block to open the draw. It's second down and along four. Keith Griffin runs, and the Cornhuskers, Rob Stuckey, rides him down. But importantly now, the clock continues to tick. Working against the top-ranked and unbeaten Cornhuskers who at the moment trail Miami 31 to 24. And if they get one more timeout, it's going to force Nebraska to take their timeouts before they get possession of the ball. This is a very big play. Now, if they can move the ball about three yards, they'll be able to kick a 40-yard field goal, and this, this ball game would be history. So I expect them to probably either throw a short out or try to run the ball about three yards. Let's see, it's third down and a long three. Keith Griffin, nothing there, and the Cornhuskers shut it down. It brings up fourth down. And the game clock continues to tick. 153, 52. Now they stop it. One of Coach Schnellenberger's sons. The other one's on the team. Sue Schnellenberger, an important part of it. 153 to go in Miami's quest for a national championship. Today there's a new power on the road. The first Nissan 300ZX. Three liters of fuel-injected turbo-thrusted V6 motion. 200 horses strong. The all-new Nissan 300ZX. It'll snap you from zero to awesome. Come alive, come your Datsun dealer. We have been fascinated from the beginning. As a machine, the human body remains a supreme invention. To unlock its potential, 
we offer Soloflex. Simple and efficient, like the body itself. Which may explain why Soloflex looks less like a machine and more like a work of art. in Miami, but the celebration's bigger than any New Year's as right now the Hurricanes, an underdog, are leading top-ranked and unbeaten Nebraska 31 to 24. Bernie Kosar's right arm has been a key, the freshman from Boardman, Ohio, and another very, very difficult factor that's mitigated against the Cornhuskers is the injury to their great runner, Mike Rozier, the Heisman Trophy winner out with an injured ankle. Went out in the second half. Fourth down now. Here's the field goal attempt. Jeff Smith drills it. Didn't get there. Nebraska will get the ball with 147 to play. John, we're going down to the final gun, it looks like, in this one. And you can see some, some coaches uh, are very quiet and passive. Others get their group ready. And this man has been an inspirational force for this group all year long. He's not about to take a back seat right now. One minute and 47 seconds between the Miami Hurricanes and the National Championship. Wide left, and it's no good. And so the Cornhuskers get back the ball with 147 to go. And the unbeaten Nebraska team trailing by seven. Irving Fryer. Rod Dellinger saved a touchdown. Finally, Fryer, who's been dormant, explodes for 29 yards, very nearly exploding for the distance. What a beautiful throw. Oh. That, that was a play in which he only took three steps back. It's the first pass in this half on first down. And that is uh, a very effective decision itself. 29 yards at you, six seconds covering some ground a lot of timeouts left a lot of time there's no hurry uh, either way but I think this man has left it all out there Rodney Bellinger number four has done a phenomenal job on Irving Fryer played him one-on-one -on -one throughout most of the evening stopped a lot of in sweeps let's take a look here just a little three-step drop he catches Fryer in between the zone and we're back on the on the field Live action, first and ten. Gill gets it away on the run. James Swanson goes up in the air, but came down empty. Overthrow, it's Lee second down and ten. And the game clock shows 1.28 to play. Jack Fernandez made another good play, forcing uh, Turner Gill to throw the ball a little before he won it. Nebraska, unbeaten, the dominant team in college football this year with a 52-point-a-game scoring average, trying to come back without the Heisman Trophy winner, Mike Rozier, sideline with an injured ankle. That's the amount of time remaining in the game. Here's a throw, and down with the ball is Ricky Simmons. It's a good catch, and the Huskers have it down to the 26-yard line of Miami, a 19-yard game. Beautiful pattern. That was perfectly timed in a beautiful pattern. They can throw that ball from a drop back. And people have talked about for what Nebraska does. Turner, Turner Gill is, is a great quarterback. I think he could be an exceptional deformation pro style quarterback. It's just that he can adapt to any style. Ricky Simmons. Way wide now. And here's a give up the middle. And this time the Hurricanes defense is there to shut down Jeff Smith. As the clock runs, 1.13 to go. And now Nebraska signals for and is allotted a timeout. And then, of course, theoretically looking at a possible Nebraska score, John, if they go in, they have the option of going for the win with a two-point conversion. The much higher percentage kicked extra point would mean a tie game. They'd still finish the season unbeaten. And would they be crowned now? In all the probability, they would be. But we don't know. We don't vote. You know, that's a decision for Tom Osborne to make. It's it's obvious if he goes for a two-pointer, the only way he can come out on top is go for a two-pointer and make it. Because then there can't be any second guessing. A two-pointer and miss, they say, hey, why don't you go for the national championship? A one-pointer and tie, why don't you go for the win? So he's in a no-win situation if 
they pick up the next 25 yards but hey that's no gimme they're playing against the toughest team in the country in the last quarter of football this group's only given up 10 points all year long Tom Osborne a doctor of educational psychology PhD he can stay under control and so can coach Dillenberger Second down and eight. 112 to play. Turner Gill with a sky pass. Irving Fryer, he dropped the ball. <laughs> the best receiver in the country, but even the great ones have a lapse. And well, Friars came at a most inopportune time. Irving Fryer has not been a big factor tonight. He's got a chance, as the great ones always do, to make the catch to put them back in the ball game. And he dropped the gimme. Steinkohler picks it up to see if it's a fumble. Apparently they're ruling his arm was in motion, were they not, John? Well, it's pretty tough to tell. We can a play they'll never forget if Nebraska doesn't go in. Now I don't, I don't know if this man has ever dropped a ball, and they've never been in this kind of situation before. But to be regarded as one of the top five players in college football, you couldn't have ever dropped a, a ball in a situation like that. And I don't think there's any more to say because nobody could feel worse. He's just hoping to get another chance. That's it. And now it could be his very last one because the Cornhuskers have fourth down coming up. Fourth down and eight. The ball at the 24-yard line of Miami. One last look. The earlier play, Irving Fryer with the goal line sprint. A perfectly thrown ball from Gill, but it's dropped. He split the defenders and was wide open was Irving Fryer. Then in his heartbreak, he collapses to the ground. And now, fourth down is coming up for Nebraska. The Cornhuskers with the longest winning streak in major college football. They've won 22 straight games, 12-0 this season, ranked number one all year. But they're down by seven. Look at this play, Jeff Smith. executed play by Turner Gill 24 yards and a touchdown now it's a 31 to 30 game and what does what Nebraska are they doing? do I have not seen the kicker come on the field and I don't think he's coming on the field and I might as well I think that they've got things going their way Tom Osborne made this decision a long time ago don't think that this situ situation caught him by surprise he's decided to go for two and take his shot and win and I commend him for it this is for the national championship for Nebraska. Remember, this ball game is not over. Right, you are. 48 seconds left to play. But this is the try. I think he made the right call. I just commend a guy that has he has the nerve to do that. He's willing to put it out there on the line. He called a good play. The ball was dropped. That's the way football goes. Miami's played a great football game. 
And if in 48 seconds, seconds they become the winner, they, they certainly deserve to be national champions. The golden anniversary of the Orange Bowl turns out to be the greatest game of all. And an onside kick, I don't think we have to make much discussion about. It will happen. Let's see how it comes out. Coach Howard Schnellenberger. His heartbeat's got to be 180. He knows this case is not closed. Mark, <laughs> Mark Tressman is down there saying, look, coach, if we recover the ball, we do not have to run a play to run out the clock. They've got two timeouts. That won't be enough. We'll be able to end this thing and go in a winner. But they must get the onside kick. I thought they had some timeouts, and they don't. What a football game in the golden anniversary year. Steve Lynch, the Orange Bowl president. All the people on the Orange Bowl committee had hoped for a great game. There was speculation Miami would be blown out. Everybody here had faith in Tom Osborne. Showed his dignity and his courage going for the win. The Huskers didn't get it though. And now Miami has only to run out the clock. The last one's always the most important. You know, when you're in this business, John, you always get asked, what's the greatest game you ever were at or saw? This is it for me. And this, <laughs> this is about as fine a football game as has ever been played and happens to be for the national championship. That man has done it all. Set it to music. This is Hurricane Warren, number one in Miami. six seconds of this game a game that will be replayed emotionally by these players and their fans throughout the years a hallmark game in college football a great demonstration of courage by Nebraska going for the win and for Miami an absolutely miracle year the dream season as they come back from a bad loss opening day to go to 11 straight wins and in all probability when the votes are in a first ever national championship for the Hurricanes the players themselves felt they were going to win tonight. They were not, they were not in awe of, of Nebraska. Now, most, many of the fans were, most of the writers were. I think anybody who had seen Nebraska play was. But these guys did it because they knew they could. I'll tell you right now, school's out. This place up for grabs. Room after one of the most dramatic 
college football games, I would venture to say, in the history of this great college game. And you notice that man has still got his composure. He had it. He, he was saying very softly all week long, I think we can win. We've got the people to win. We can't afford to make mistakes. We can't afford to keep get anybody hurt. But I'll tell you, if we all hang in there, I feel we can do it. He's been letting his team know. They've been preparing for six weeks, and they did it. That's a wonderful feat against a great team. It was, and the confidence you talked about, John, really was evident all week long. It, it, even when he went to scout Nebraska at the Oklahoma game, Snellenberger says they're going to be the best team we'll face all year, but they can be beaten. We can't make mistakes if we're going to do it, but we can win, and they did. And it was an offense that came out from the gun, throwing the ball around. They knew they had to put some points on the board early, get a lead, hang in there. They did that. Then comes Nebraska back. And they did it again. I mean, that, I, you know, when everybody said, oh boy, they'll make it close anyway, now they open up another 14 point lead. That man right there, Dennison, catches two touchdowns. And here is the critical play of the game. Nebraska goes for two. The play is broken up at the goal line. And the Huskers, in their valiant effort to win the game rather than go for the tie, come up empty. And ultimately now, the victory and possibly, quite more than possibly, the national championship going to the University of Miami. There are two polls, of course, the coaches' poll and the writers' poll. We'll be back to the 50th Orange Bowl in a moment. But right now, it's Miami, a 31 to 30 victor. Let's go to Len Berman in New York. Len? Thank you, Don Cricky. What a day it's been around the country on Bowl Day 84. And really, when you think about it, number one, number two, and number five all lost today. So the big day for upsets. Who will be number one? We'll figure it out in a few minutes, perhaps. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the highlights from around the country today. First up, the Fiesta Bowl right here on NBC Sports. The view in Tempe, Arizona, as Pittsburgh thought they may have had a late fourth quarter win with the snuffy Everett field goal, but... Ohio State showed some class coming back. Over the years, they've been a running team. Here they win it with a touchdown pass with just 39 seconds to go. Tom Zach to Jemison, and they win it 28 to 23. On to the Cotton Bowl. The Dogs did it. They trailed 9-3 to number two unbeaten Texas, but Texas fumbled this punt late in the fourth quarter. Gary Moss recovered it for Georgia. So then Georgia. They took it in from 17 yards away. Their quarterback, John Lastinger, did it. So number two unbeaten Texas loses to Georgia, 10 to nine. In the Rose Bowl today here on NBC, all Bruins, the Pac-10 continues to do it to the Big Ten. Number five, Illinois, goes down to defeat 45 to nine at the hands of Rick Neuheisel. This 15-yard pass to Carl Durrell was one of four. That tied a Rose Bowl record. So when you think about the last 15 Rose Bowls, the Pac-10 has won 13 of them. Then the Sugar Bowl tonight, Auburn fans feel perhaps they should get a few votes for number one. They knocked off Michigan by a score of nine to seven, although they did not score a touchdown today. They did all with field goals. Bo Schembechler and Michigan, well, they had the lead throughout the game. This was the only touchdown. Steve Smith, four yard rollout, seven nothing Michigan. But the uh, Auburn uh, defense really did a job on Michigan here. Four turnovers. Now, here we go. Al Del Greco, 19-yard field goal, third of the game with 23 seconds remaining. Auburn wins it 9-7. to seven. Their fans say, give us a couple of votes for number one. Now, the game you just saw, one of the great collegiate bowl games in history, perhaps the top Orange Bowl in their 50-year history. Miami knocks off powerful Nebraska as Howard Schnellenberger and company do it. They took a 17-0 lead. Bernie Kosar, two-yard touchdown pass to Glenn Dennison. That was the first of the touchdown plays. Then the trick play. Here's how Nebraska got on the board. The snap that they fumbled on purpose. The guard, Dean Steinkuehler, picked it up, ran 19 yards for the touchdown, and Nebraska finally scored and trailed 17-7. Now second-half action. Albert Bentley, seven yards away. He takes it in. Miami now leads it 31-17. Critical play here. Mike Regier is hurt. Leaves the game with an ankle injury. He finished with 147 yards. But Nebraska came back. Heartbreak here for Irving Fryer. Wide open, and he dropped it. But Nebraska got Fryer off the hook. Jeff Smith did it on a fourth and eight. Smith takes it all the way in for the touchdown, and Nebraska closes to within one at 31-30. 
The gutsy call going for two points. It's not to be. Miami wins it 31-30. So, who is the national champion? Is it Miami? Is it Auburn? Or is it Nebraska? All have just one loss. Nebraska's gutsy call may have lost them the game going for two points, but it may have won them some votes. We'll find out 6.30 tomorrow night. Len Berman in New York, back to the Orange Bowl now. Thank you, Len. 31 to 30, the final score, Miami the victor, and now let's go down to the Miami locker room to Bill McAtee. Bill? Okay, thank you very much, Don Cricky. Bernie Kozar, I think somebody forgot to tell you you were a freshman. You hung in there, showed a lot of poise. Your line did a terrific job. I'll tell you, today, the offensive line, they've been, they really haven't been getting much credit all season. And uh, there's the guys like right there, Ian Sinclair, Paul Berticelli, my roommate, Alvin Ward, you know, all of Dave Heffernan and Juan Clement. That's a heck of a group. I'll tell you, I, those guys, they, they said they give their life for me, and I think they just about did today. I know Nebraska plays a lot of man, and it, there was no doubt that you felt you could throw on them. Yeah, we went into the game thinking that, uh, you know, we were going to be able to throw the ball. We tried to, uh, you know, we tried to mix it up early, and I think we did in the first quarter, but the, uh, well, but the, in the second quarter, we kind of got out of our game plan, kind of started throwing the balls too much, but, uh, you know, we got back into it the third quarter and were able to move the ball. You had a couple of new plays in there. I know one of the touchdown passes to Dennison was new. Yeah, they, uh, I think the second touch, the second touchdown we had today was at, uh, it's called 50 wide middle as a new play, and uh, it worked well you know, quite a couple times today. I want to take you back uh, to the beginning of the season, the first week after the loss. Did you ever feel that it would come down to a moment like this? No, never. That's the only way to describe it. I never, you know, I... You know, I knew the team had the potential to, you know, win our games, but they end up the way it did. I really you, you know that Auburn won. Is there any question, though, in your mind who's number one? Well, I guess it's up, you know, up to the polls, but I'd say in my heart, we're number one. Okay, Bernie Kozar. That's, that's the greatest coach right there. Howard, come on over, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, when you spoke of this game, you spoke in terms not only of it being an important football game, but in terms of community. Well, I think you could see out there in that stadium tonight what it really meant to this community and how totally involved and totally committed they were to this game tonight. This has been a love affair that's been developing for five years. Tonight was the uh, fulfillment of a dream that, uh, I say fulfillment, it might just be the beginning of a dream. I want to take you back a few moments ago on the field, the gutsy call by Tom Osborne to go for two. Now, he probably could have won the national championship had they tied the ball game. Was there any doubt in your mind that he tried for two? There was no doubt, doubt in Tom Osborne's mind. There was no doubt in my mind. He's a champion, and he uh, went after it like a champion. Now, one of the keys to this ball game, you said earlier in the week, was that if Nebraska scored, they had to take at least ten plays to do it. No big plays. And when they got their touchdowns, that's exactly how they did it. Well, it was, and that was a real reason why we were successful. Uh, the defense played... A super football game. They had one really major error, but other than that, they played a great football game against a great, great Nebraska football team, and our offense came back to life and uh, did some things pretty well, too. Bernie Kosar was super. This was a game, obviously, for your football team of emotion, and yet you had to be a little unnerved when Mike Rozier took off for 27 yards early on. I was unnerved uh, much of the game because when you have those types of people in the game, you know it can break at any time. But again, the defense played a bending defense, but they didn't break very much. Now, of course, Auburn won. Uh, is there any question in your mind about who's number one in the country? No, there's no question in my mind or anybody in this room's mind who's number one team in Amer uh, America. The Miami Hurricanes are the number one team. Uh, there have been an awful lot of stories about you leaving the University of Miami. Uh, we have to address those now. Well, it's just like you say, they're stories. No truth to them whatsoever? They're stories. Tony Fitzpatrick, your nose guard, it was very important, you said early, for him to get in there and penetrate, and he seemed to do that. Tony Fitzpatrick has to be the most gutty guy that I've known in a long, long time. Hadn't played a football game in 10 weeks. Scrimmage one time for 16 plays, and then to go out and play probably 72 plays against the finest offensive line in America. Howard, congratulations. A terrific football game. We enjoyed watching it as well. Thank you. 31 to 30. The University of Miami makes its claim to the national championship. Let's go back upstairs at Iron Cricket. Thank you, Bill. The emotion that's been spent this evening is as awesome as the game itself. It was just a phenomenal football game. We're just so privileged to be able to be a part of it, John. Yeah, and I think it's all been said, Don. The whole Orange Bowl committee couldn't have drawn up a better script, and the only man that predicted it was Bob Lafferty, so he's next year's president. He gets off on a good note.
Well, it was a great, great victory. And again, uh, when you talk about the football game, as much as the Miami victory, you have to remember the courage, the valor of Tom Osborne and the Nebraska Cornhuskers going for the win. They did not get it. The final score, Miami 31, Nebraska 30 in the golden anniversary year of the Orange Bowl. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Wiseman. The coordinating producer of NBC's football coverage is Ted Nathanson. Today's telecast was produced by George Finkel, directed by John Gonzalez, technical director Lenny Stucker, associate director Joe Michaels, associate producer Antoinette Machiaverna. Due to the length of tonight's game, the Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson will not be seen. Stay tuned for local news, followed by Late Night with David Letterman. The final number's up on the golden anniversary of the Orange Bowl. The Miami Hurricanes, a team that started out the season losing to Florida 28-3, come back now to win 11 straight games, including this, the biggest victory in the school's history, a 31-30 upset of the number one team in the country, Nebraska. Miami doing it, led by a freshman quarterback, Bernie Kosar, playing with the skill and guile of an established veteran. He never let up, and when Miami was down and Nebraska had come back, they rally, they summon from deep within, and Miami scores one of the great football victories in the college game ever. So glad you could be with us. He has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. We serve more of this land's top 100 business centers than any other airline. Fly the friendly skies. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by Hilton. When American business hits the road, American business stops at Hilton, America's business address. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports, the leader in innovative sports television. Friday, he's head over heels in love, and he's fit to be tied. Can a jerk like this save the girl of his dreams from marrying the wrong man? He's the jerk, too, Friday.